What's going on, Jets fans? Welcome into NYJ today. It's good to be here. Good to see you guys. It's Wednesday night. We are doing our thing. It's the 22nd episode of the podcast. 20, 22 weeks in a row. Uh, we're going strong here. We've got great comments tonight. We've got voicemails. We would love to take some phone calls early in the show. That would be also awesome. Chad, Mike, how you feeling? Let's go to Mike first. I think I went to Chad first last week. So, Mike, it's you first, buddy. What up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Feeling good. Feeling good. I uh, I love the topics for this week. Um, you know, now I, all eyes are set on camp. Ready for that. Ready for the season to get started. And uh, let's get this train out of the station, I say. So I'm ready. What about you, Chad? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling better than Corey Davis in an interview <laughs> by Rich Simini. No, we'll, we'll, we'll break it down. That. Oh, you don't want to break it down? Go ahead and break it down. No, I mean we can. It was just it's you know, I often people often talk about about the uh the New York media and, and why they are the way they are. And and honestly, I I think it just comes down to competition. Like it you've got how many major news outlets with New York plus New Jersey, and they're all competing with each other. Um, but Rich Simini just has a way to, to to push those questions and get on everybody's nerves. So if, if anybody didn't see what happened um, is earlier today, and Rich uh, Simini kept pestering Corey Davis about this comment that he made back in March about he's looking forward to play with Sam Darnold. Well, obviously, Darnold's been traded since then. And Corey, to his credit, Corey Davis played it well. He's He's like... Look, Zach's a quarterback. What do you want me to tell you? I'm looking forward to playing with Zach. That's it, period. Leave me alone. So it's good to see that uh, Rich Simini is back to his old ways. Um, yeah. But no, man, I'm looking forward to Islanders back in the Coliseum, I think, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see a strong showing from some of the guys there, some of the Jets there, um, and hoping that they can take that series. And Brooklyn is back. Hate to cut you off, but we do have a phone call, it seems. So let me answer that real quick. Okay. I sent the caller voicemail. Goodbye. I just hung up on them. <laughs> That's happened a couple of times. Let me... <laughs> That, that is a uh, Thanks for that, calling. that is a user error, if you will. <laughs> Everyone, please call us. We'd love to yeah. hear from you as I hang up on you. Oh man, that's embarrassing, isn't it? Give him a chance to answer here, and then we'll move on. We wonder why we don't have too many voicemails. Please leave your message. Yeah, he didn't answer. All right. <laughs> Maybe he'll call back. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, we were talking about. Corey Davis, Chad, you want to finish up what you were saying? Yeah, no, I think it's I think it's a good way. Um, I think it's a good uh, indication of, of how he's going to be with the media. Because look, I mean, there's going to be tough times, and he's going to be looked at as a veteran leader in the locker room. And and guys like Rich Semeni are going to try to get those front page headlines get under his skin. We don't have Manish Meta uh, Manish Meta on the uh, on the beat anymore. I don't know whatever happened to him. He got like perma banned. You don't know um, what happened to him? I, I don't know where he is now. I don't know what he's doing now. I think I unfollowed him on Twitter. How's it going, um, man? All right, we got our call. How's it going, man? Welcome to NYJ today. What's up, man? Defense wins championships. What's up, dude? What's up, man? I just want to listen to National Dean, man. He's going to the Pro Bowl by the time he's second year. Third year all pro. You heard it here first, man. Who's going to Pro Bowl? Nasruddin, by the time he's in the second year. Oh, Naz, Dean, yes, dude. Tell me a little bit about Naz, why, you, or excuse me, uh, Ham, why you love him so much. He's tackling the scene, man. You know, I'm a Florida State fan, and um, by far the most physical, you know, DB we've ever had, man. He, he's gonna, he's got heart too, man. He, he's gonna, he's gonna light it up. Yeah, dude, I feel really good about him. I feel good about Jamie and Sherwood competing with him. I do think, like you, like you were kind of alluding to here. I feel like Nazel Dean's going to take that job uh, away from him. What do you guys think? Yeah, about? I don't think Sherwood has a chance. Yeah, I don't think so either. He doesn't have the athleticism. And I think that whatever, you know, Jamian does well, I think Ham, Ham <clears throat> excuse me, I think Hamza does just as good, if not better. 
Yeah, honestly, I thought he was going to go late second round, early third round, to see him drop to the sixth round. Yeah. That's a steal, man. Yeah, it's crazy. And uh, I feel like a lot of people think that injury may have led to that. Um, I still don't know why he fell as far as he did, If even if you account the, the for the ACL, injury. That's it, man. If you look at every mock draft before the ACL, he was first round, early second round. That's, that's the only reason why he dropped. It has to be the ACL. Yeah, dude, I love that. You got any more takes for us before we let you go? K-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. <laughs> no, I just want to tell yeah, you, baby. man, um, I love you so, man. I I appreciate it, and um, we're going to have a good season this year, man. It's going to be fun. We're Absolutely. Lose. Jet up, brother. I'll talk to you soon, man. Thanks for calling in. Y- yes, sir. All right, bro. Have a good night. There you go, DWC from thegangreen.com calling in for the show. Appreciate that, my man. First time caller. We are no taking, problem. yeah, we are taking phone call. Got excuse me, phone calls. So call in to the show, guys. We are happy to take your phone calls. Chad, you've been cut off like three times now already. Yeah, um, poor guy. Yeah. So did you really not know what happened to Manish Mehta? No, I knew the. I don't know where he is today. Uh, like, oh, I, don't I know gotcha. What, so he might be covering, I, I don't know who he's covering today, but um, no. So I know the whole controversy that went down, like, what was it, a year or so ago? Mm-hmm. Um, just crazy stuff. Um, I mean, it was fun to follow. I mean, where else would that happen uh, except New York? But uh, no. So so I think, like, who's who's replacing him on the Jets beat? Um, I don't know if anybody's replacing the craziness, but Rich Mini always has a way to get under people's skin. So um, it'll be interesting to see how people react to that. Absolutely. All right, cool. Well, we will uh, kind of just get into the comments, or excuse me, into the uh, topics, I should say. Or no, not topics, voicemails. My bad, I'm all over the place. Uh, the first voicemail of the night is going to be from Grant Rude, and he is calling from Canada. Oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Grant Rude on uh, some Jets football. Hey guys, uh, Grant Rude, Saskatoon calling. I uh, just wanted to kind of give you guys the lowdown on what I'm hearing from OTAs and uh, wanted to double down on uh, Elijah Moore being Debo Samuel and then some. Uh, so I'm going to tell you that I'm right after OTAs and we'll see if I'm right or not in the middle of the week. That's it. Thanks. Bye. All right. Thank you so much, Grant Rude, for the voicemail. Uh, So he's calling about uh, Elijah Moore, and he is just talking about how he's right about him being an awesome player. And he was talking about Elijah Moore all the way up to the draft, and he he dropped him probably every week in the chat. Uh, He was saying how he's right about Elijah Moore. He's going to become the next uh, Debo Samuel. So what do you guys think about those comments as far as Debo Samuel like or Debo Samuel esque in this offense, uh, we'll go to Chad first. All right, so we're we're having that audio. Yeah, we're having bad. that audio issue um, where it makes me feel like I'm having a stroke. Um, <laughs> but it sounded it sounded like somebody mentioned Elijah Moore. Correct. Well, I just recapped it. Can you not hear me? <laughs> I, I, you literally sound like Alvin from the Chipmunks to me right now. That's very weird. All right, well, let me just put my ear pods in. Maybe that'll fix it. I don't know. How is that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You're back. Yes. Just got better. All right. Thanks. I need to. I I need to ditch the AirPods. There's something about them that's effing up the the sound. So anyway, Elijah Moore being basically the Debo Samuel of this offense. He's ripping it up in OTAs, and Grant Rude's basically just saying, I'm right already. So what do you guys think about that? Chad, you're first. I, it's so hard not to want to buy into all this Elijah Moore hype. I thought that we were going to get Elijah Moore hype. I didn't think that it was going to come in June. I thought maybe he would have some some flashes in preseason game one or preseason game two. And then we would all go crazy a la, um, Oh God, help me out here. Oh, someone's going to get it. Who was the wide receiver that we had? Stephen Hill years. No. Well, maybe Stephen Hill. Oh God. But there was another Santana? guy, David Clowney, no, no, no. Clowney, David Clowney. <laughs> Got him. I was, yes. I was thinking that we were going to have some kind and I'm not, I'm not saying Elijah Moore is David Clowney before I get right. Right. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying 
I thought that he was gonna we were gonna have some some breakout. But we're hearing about these spectacular catches that he's making in OTAs, and I'm just eating it up. I'm just you know I'm like I I'm putting it on a loop. Um, I'm instead of coffee in the morning, I'm I'm watching Elijah Moore video, and I'm I'm running out the door. Um, so yeah, look, man, there's nothing not to be excited. This is this is the time of year to get to get excited about this stuff. Why not? Let's be irrational. Um, right. I mean, I, I said he wouldn't be rookie of the year. Maybe I was wrong. I don't know. Uh, Mike, talk a little bit about uh, Elijah Moore. Um, Grant's saying he is already right. This was he one says, of the few things that me and Grant agreed on. You know, when we did the stream, what, two or three, it was right after the draft about who we thought was going to have the biggest season. I had Elijah Moore at the top of my list. I, I, and, and, there, and, I, and I, I understood those who said that that was really premature to kind of think that he was going to come out of the gate um that hot but i'm not i'm not surprised by it and i agree i agree with with grant i think elijah's going to be a huge part of our offense i think he's going to be a huge part of zach's progression and and in, in his ability to establish connections with receivers um and if i was zach you know and i would want i would be you know when i feel like i was comfortable i'd be leaning on salad and be like hey you know put play elijah because i i feel like if anything, if we're going to build something here, let me start building with the guy who could be here with me, not with the guy on his way out the door with his renegotiated contract. So um, I'm not surprised, and I hope I hope it, I hope I will say this: I, the, the call on the Tyreek Hill of the Jets. I don't know if I'm that I'm not I'm not that crazy. Yeah, not not in the sense that that's crazy, but in the sense that he hasn't seen an NFL defense yet, and it is a totally different a totally different beast. So. Um, I need to see some some of that electricity on the field, but I'm all about the hype right now. Uh, to defend Gumball, I don't think he's saying he will be as productive as Tyreek Hill. I think he's just saying that he is our version of that explosive field stretcher, dynamic receiver. So, yeah, I I will admit I didn't do enough research on – oh, and Chad has uh-huh. left the building. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, texting him. Yeah, it's okay. I um, I will add it back. I um, I will admit that I didn't do enough research on Elijah Moore, where I should have known more about him. I mean, he's a clear early, like a late first, early second round guy, and I didn't really know enough about him, and I should have known more about him. He's very, very talented, and I just <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> So, yeah, he is back, yes. Uh, Anyway, um, I just love the fit. I think he fits the offense great, and he is exactly what I was hoping for when we were talking about getting Curtis Samuel. I really, really wanted somebody like that in the offense, and we got him. I think we got him in Elijah Moore, and I couldn't be any happier about it. So uh, we'll move on from that. We've got a couple of comments in the chat. Uh, Gumball did say that Moore is our Tyreek Hill. He also says, James DiPietro says, would love to have more be like Samuel. Would like Herndon to be like Kittle too. <laughs> this is probably a fair thing to realize. Like they're not all going to produce, you know, like they're the compared player in the in the Shanahan offense. All right. Uh, Grant Rude does point out, if Elijah Moore is in the rookie of the year talks, that means Wilson's definitely going to get it. The QB is always going to, you know, prioritize for these types of awards in the NFL. So I would agree with that. Yes, and Ratliff, I forgot about him. Jeez, that two thousand, oh, that 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 two thousand. What, what a bust that was! Well, he was just. They traded for him from the Browns when they traded up for Sanchez. They got him in the in the deal. I know. <clears throat> so do you remember how much hype, hype there was for Ratliff in those first few games? Do you remember that? No, I don't remember. Was, I think he threw. No, he did something. There was like a lot of hype for Rattlet. They wanted him. They wanted him to play. I, I, he was competing with someone. I can't remember. I, can't remember. I have no idea. I mean, he's nobody. He's he hasn't. He didn't do anything in the NFL, so <laughs> <laughs> it's not really worth discussing. Uh, Sean Bennett throws a question in, which I like. He says Denzel Mims playing on a se- on the second team dr- on the, excuse me on the second team in those drills. He's asking, will Denzel Mims become the Jets' fourth wide receiver? And I would assume he means behind. 
Corey Davis, Keelan Cole, Elijah Moore, those three guys. So that would make Mims four. Uh, Mike, you're first. Will Denzel Mims become the fourth Jet wide receiver? I don't think you can make that decision right now. I think I think it's possible. I think it's possible depending on how camp goes. I'll say that. And depending on how Zach, where is how Zach's progression and his connections with, with these receiver go, Corey's not going anywhere. Corey Corey will be Corey will be the the the, the, the number one wide out. Okay. Number two number two gets interesting to me. Number two is really interesting to me. I I do think that, I do think Elijah will solidify himself as number three, but number two is really interesting, which then dictates who's fourth and. I don't know. I, I, I could I could see a, a, very, a number of different combinations, and I'm not trying to to, to do a cop out or anything. But I, I really think I really think it's too early to, to really know for sure. It could happen. I do want to answer the question. I do, I it could I could see it that way. And you know the early the early reports at OTAs was Mims was quiet, um, but I'm not counting him out just yet. Okay, Chad, how you how you view that uh, fourth receiver Mims? Yeah, this. I mean, this question to me comes down to if if Elijah Moore is as good as advertised, I don't think that they're going to keep him in the slot. I think he'll start out in the slot, but I think they're going to give him options on the outside. And that's yeah. immediately that's going to turn him in. Go, That's going to make him go from the third, fourth or fifth, possibly to the number two option. Um, and we just re-signed Jameson so he could take over that slot position. So, yes, it, if Moore is as good as advertised, Corey Davis isn't going anywhere, then it might be Moore, uh, then it might be Jameson Crowder, and then, yes, Mims would be the fourth receiver in that situation. Isn't that incredible that we have gotten to this point where our second-round pick the year prior could slide down the depth chart like this? And it's not because of necessarily poor performance. It's just we've got a really good, really, really deep wide receiver squad. Um, I'll say this. I don't think that will happen. I'll, I will stand by what I've said. I think that Denzel Mims and Corey Davis on the outside is a thing. That does not mean that Elijah Moore won't play on the outside. I just think that Mims on a pretty consistent basis is going to be on the outside with Corey Davis. So I feel strongly <clears throat> worst case scenario for Mims. He's the third you know, option in the offense as far as receiving goes. So we'll just have to wait and see how that all plays out. But it's very interesting to talk about. A lot of people are interested in this Mims uh, off season so far. It's been it's been a little bit uh, not disappointing, but it's been a little bit surprising to not surprising. see him. Yep, I think that's yeah. the word. Yep. All right, let's keep going to the chat. You guys are blowing it up, which is awesome. Hey, Vern, Vern, good to see you. Sean Bennett says he could easily be a 1,200 yard receiver. I think in a in a established offense with a veteran quarterback, definitely. I don't think there's any floor, or excuse me, any ceiling for Denzel Mims. I think he has all the potential. It just needs to all work out for him. He needs to stay healthy. He needs to find chemistry with uh, Zach Wilson. So we just have to wait. <clears throat> uh, let's see, and that's true too. That's kind of what I've been saying. There's really not. There's so many weapons on the offense. No true number one in my in my eyes. So there's a lot of people to feed. There's a lot of mouths to feed. So uh, Gumball says, I'll say this about Mims. <clears throat> He's not hurt. That's a big plus. Now he has to deserve, excuse me, now he has to show that he deserves more. And that's kind of how I have taken it as well. On Twitter, I was talking to uh, James Wighouse, who we had on the show last week. I think it's great that he's on the second team. I, if Bill Parcells was still the coach, I feel like that would be the same decision. That is a Bill Parcells move. It would put him on that second team squad, and if you don't show out, then you stay on second team, bro. That's how it yeah. goes. You have to perform in practice to get what you want to be a to be a starter, to get your targets in the offense. Like you got to earn that, and I think that's <laughs> there's that bottle cap. I think that's the only way to approach uh, Denzel Mims. So it's not a bad thing that he's on the second team. I don't think people should be worried about that. Cliff Hopkins with a good question. Or maybe it's just a statement. How in the hell is Herndon practicing with the second team? Explain that. <laughs> Chad, explain that. How is he on the second team? Yeah, I think patience is running low with Chris Herndon. Um, look, I mean, I know that we as, as fans... Um, You're talking with the Jets organization, 
The Jets yeah. are the eighth Yeah. Okay. And, 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 sure. and quite frankly, the the fans too, because yeah, uh, they're awful. right. Um, and there was a report about a drop the other day. Um, you know, here's the thing. I think if if Kenny Yoboa starts making flashes, or um, oh, I know he's more, or, or 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 Croft starts flashing, they're they're easily going to get that number one tight end spot. Um, I just don't think that we have the patience anymore for an inconsistent uh, Chris Herndon, <clears throat> despite the fact that he he had all the talent in the world. And I'm not I'm not talking about him like he's done already. But he very well may be if uh, if he doesn't have a good training camp and preseason. Yeah, uh, Mike comments on Herndon. I'm so tired of it. I, <laughs> I can't, I, <laughs> it's a good way to I'm say so it. Tired. So yeah. I'm tired of it. I, if, again, another great example. Bill Parcells is here. He should be lucky. He's playing with the second team. Good way to good way to summarize that. Um, he's like the child that disappoints. You know. You just want to, you just want to ring him by the yeah. neck and just say like, "What the hell, man? Like, come on, you're talented." What would you do with him? I don't think the Jets are in a situation where they can cut him, and I, I, they have very, very little at the tight end spot. Tyler Croft, I feel pretty good about as a number two tight end in the offense. He might even end up being the number one tight end for the team, which is scary, I think, because he's not a real threat at that tight end spot. Um, so. Personally, I wouldn't cut him because we don't have anybody to really replace him. And I would rather keep Herndon, um, Croft, and Yaboa. I would like to keep all three. Um, unless, they're gonna, unless they're keeping a fullback. Then it gets dicey. Then you might not be able to keep three tight ends. So I have no idea, dude. I was, that's what I was just about to say. I, I would just say play the fullback or if you're going to put Herndon in, use him to block and we'll use him for the run game. Hmm. It's mess, man. It's an absolute mess with with Herndon. <clears throat> it's still very early, though. OTAs, minicamp are completed now. Let's see how training camp goes. Let's see how the preseason goes. I don't see them moving on from him from now until then. Maybe he'll have a good preseason game early and he'll get his confidence back. Like, I think like that's all he needs right now is just to get some mojo going. So, Gumball. Maybe LaFleur wants to light a fire under Herndon. Kind of like the Denzel Mims approach. Uh, just get him fired up and get him to earn his spot, really. Uh, let's see. And Grant Rude does say, I don't think that Herndon's going to make the roster. I'm not happy about that because we are pretty bad at the tight end spot if that's the case. <clears throat> and even worse. I think we would be worse without Herndon on the roster. Because who are you replacing it with? Well, if we make a trade... If we get a tight end, but I don't what's think... he contributing to the team? You're just you're saying that because of his value on paper, on the field. What does he do? I'm not saying because of his value on paper. I'm saying who are we replacing him with? That's what I'm saying. Right, but that's on paper. What if that guy? What if, what if that guy can actually contribute as much or more? If we can get somebody, absolutely. I think we need to make a move though in the trade realm to get a tight end. I don't think there's anything available right now. So. Oh, I agree with you on that. I agree with you. All right. Let's see. Nate comes in with his stoic look. How is it possible to make determinations of who is going to play, how, or where when the rookie minicamps are all about teaching? I mean, there's literally no hitting, pads, or scrimmaging. Isn't it all conjecture? This is a good question, Nate. Very nice job. Well done, sir. You get a... You get a little of that and a little bit of that. A little coinage for you. Um, Who went first last? Was it Chad? All right. All right yeah. so, so, Mike, you're up. Um, what do you think about that? How can how can, can we make determinations? I think the easy answer is probably no. No. This is, this is all fandom. Yeah. All right. All right. This, this is... All... Right. <laughs> this is all fandom. Yep. This, this is part of the podcast business. Yeah. what this is. <laughs> It is true, though. Uh, Chad, you got uh, anything? Yeah, no, I mean, I just think I think that's what we do. There's always there's stories that get way overhyped this time of year. Um, like, they're making a big deal, you know, talking about Dolphins, but uh, Tua throwing, like, five, six, seven picks yesterday in a practice, and is that a big deal? I don't know. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, we are going to eat up whatever is out there. So at the end of the day, we are going to make a big deal ab- about it. 
Um, so whether it's right or it's wrong, that's what's kind of going to happen. Is this, is this where we give the disclaimer? We're not experts. We are fans. Exactly. That's <laughs> but... a good, that's a very good thing to say. And I feel like more people need to understand that. We are not experts. We are truly Jets fans. That's why we involve you guys. Cause we're just a bunch of assholes like you. So it's, <laughs> it's no, it's no different. We are all Jets fans. Um, we're those guys throwing bean bags in the parking lot. Outside yeah. <laughs> uh, Cole, Cole and why? Uh, says, I think Sala said recently that Moore can play X, Y, or Z. And so those are, I believe, the three positions, um, two outsides and the slot. So that's great. I mean, if he can line up anywhere, it just makes it even easier for us to scheme him I mean, open. three-dimensional. The X, Y, and Z plane. Mm-hmm. Um, a little, a little, little teacher comment to, to tickle John. Yeah, no, the sum, summer's coming. I'm not a teacher anymore in a couple of days, so. Um, Sean Bennett agrees. He says that is a parcel move. That's a good omen. Uh, <laughs> Kyle says, man, Chad must keep his house frigid. Dude is always wearing a hooded sweatshirt inside. <laughs> Very right. observant. And the windows are closed, keeping the cicadas outside where they belong. Yes, very good. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Sean Bennett says, who watched Ocho Cinco getting his knock? Oh, <laughs> getting man, his... He, got, he got knocked out. <laughs> he got his shit kicked in badly. Oh, Here's man. Problem on that topic, though, I'm sure. That was, it was great to watch the highlights. I'm so glad I didn't pay the 50 bucks to watch that. That Logan Paul versus uh, Floyd Mayweather fight. It was, no. it was so bad. I was, it yeah. was disappointing. Yeah, Logan Paul, it was like a, it was literally a circus yeah. of punches. Like he was just wildly yeah. swinging at Matt Floyd Mayweather. So, it although was... I am pretty, I know this is not football related, it's my last point. I am pretty pumped about that Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder fight coming up. So, um, you, we might have to do something. You want to, uh, uh, you want to get, I got the last one uh, over here. We're oh, losing, good. we're losing your connection yeah. a little bit. Oh. What'd you say, buddy? Let's get that fight when it comes, when it happens. Sounds like a deal. Well, let's drink some beers. When is that? When is it coming out? July 24th. Oh, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. All right, let's see. Uh, next year's tight end, definitely going to be a second-round pick. You could even make the case that you could spend a first on that. I would be okay with that, even if it's a good – if there's a really good tight end that could benefit um, Zach Wilson, I'm all for that. All right, let's see. <laughs> Sean Bennett says to, uh, uh, let's see. I'm just catching up on the chat here. It looks like we're pretty good here. Uh, you guys cool with moving on? We've only done one voicemail, so this is kind of nice. Yeah, we're not going to be able to hear it, so you're going to have to repeat it to us. <clears throat> well, it's okay. I can summarize it very quickly, and you'll be able to respond. Um, I mean, I could try again. I could try to. Can you guys still hear me? Oh, now I can. Yeah. You can hear it? Yeah. Okay, Bert, beautiful. We, we should be able to hear the voicemail then. This is Isaac Benjamin calling in. He's a caller and a voicemail lever. We appreciate it. Uh, here we go. What is up, NYJ today? This is Isaac Benjamin. I haven't spoken to you guys in a while. Just wanted to drop this little thing right here. I've been hearing a lot of things and seeing a lot of things on Twitter and social media, basically talking about the Jets and after a few uh, a couple of years, you know, what's going to happen with Matt LaFleur, he's going to leave if they're good. You know, it's just, it tickles me how we want the Jets to be good. But then when we start thinking about what happens if they start to succeed, we always go to the negative. But how about this little one? Let's talk about this and let's think about this for a second. What if the New York Jets can become what the New, the New England Patriots have been? What if the New England, the New York Jets, excuse me, can end up turning into like the New England Patriots with a solid on the floor for the next several years, the way Belichick and McDaniels have been? Let's think about that. Let's talk about that. That's something I'd like to see and hear about. Let's see everything that can go on with that kind of criteria and that mindset. Go Jets. Let's do it. Could you guys hear that one? Yeah. Awesome. So the headphones were just effing up last time. Uh, great phone call. Thank you, Isaac Benjamin, for calling in. We really do appreciate the voicemails, guys. It gives us a good vibe in the chat and uh, just the stream in general. Uh, Chad, you're up. What do you? What are your takes on what he said? 
I, I, think I mean, it's a great I, question, by the way, it's a different take, a different. It is. It no, it is, and it's something similar was brought up a, a, a couple months ago. I, here, here's the thing, man. I, you know, I've been suffering for twenty some years. My dad's been suffering since the early '70s. Um, I don't. I want one. Okay, I want one. I'm tired of Sundays being the worst day of the week. I'm tired of crying in my pillow on Sunday nights. I'm tired of throwing. I'm tired of throwing my remote at the guys on SNY at 6:30 in disgust uh, with and, and making all the excuses. So, I, like, while it's great to think about what might happen if we start winning and then trying to keep guys. I just want to get there first. I just I want to be a competitive team. I want to I want all of these years of suffering to make some sort of sense. I make it make sense. Make it make sense. <laughs> uh, Mike, your take on uh, Isaac Benjamin's call. I don't know. I'm with Chad. I mean, we we've, we've all suffered. Uh, we've all gone through the pain of. For a lot of us, I know we did the introductory of how we became Jets fans, and all three of us went through that heritage, and and some of us kind of admitted that it was a family heirloom that got passed down to us, like a lamp or a coat rack, oh. <laughs> and, and here we are, and um, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'll uh, bleed green and white for the rest of my life. It would be nice to say that we were part of a championship team. There are nights where I'm talking to both of these gentlemen. Actually, they're over here um, <laughs> about what would happen if the team was selected to be advancing the European fan base. That 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 has been a conversation between me, John, and Chad, and that that fact scares me. In which case, the the need and the urge to win. I think is growing for the franchise. I will go out there on that limb and say that. I think that that the was it was sixty nine, right? So sixty nine. How long? How is that? That's thirty years. What are we going on? Fifty years? Forty five years? Fifty years. Yeah. I think I think I think the league. I think the league's patience for the Jets and its perpetual state is running out. Get out I of do your think mind. That's not I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I know we I know we pull in money. I know we pull in money. Our name doesn't carry any any gravitas. It doesn't carry any it doesn't carry any prestige. In which case, I do think that I do I do I do sympathize with Jet fans when it comes to their lack of patience. And I'm I'm just gonna go and say this. Don't you guys think that the Jets in totality, the Jets fan base patience with the franchise has dwindled? from 2010 till now versus what it was before that. I don't know, man. It's been pretty low. It's been pretty low patience. From I, would, I think, I think, I think fireman Ed hanging up the hat, not to say that there's some people who are not big fireman Ed fans. And I get that, but I would say ever since that, I think we've been more and more on the hot seat in terms of the uh, same old jets doing the same old stupid stuff. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to answer his question. I'm going to talk about LaFleur and Sala being together. It would be awesome if they could stick together for years. But I will throw in one caveat. LaFleur's brother is the head coach, as you probably know, Isaac. He is the head coach of the Green Bay Packers. It doesn't necessarily mean that Mike LaFleur aspires to be a head coach, but it's a pretty good guess that his brother would probably one day like the shot to become a head coach. So in my opinion, in my take, I think that we'd be lucky to get him and to, to keep him, you know, assuming we have success for, you know, four to five years, that would be ideal. If we could actually have some real true consistency. If he stays for more than three, that means that we're doing something right, I think. And so that's my hope is that we can keep the band together, excuse me, for about four to five years, at least until Zach Wilson's second contract. And then after that, we just want to win, man. It's like Chad said, it's like Mike said, we're just tired. We just want to win a Super Bowl. We don't really care too much about a dynasty at this point. And Mike's right. The, the, the franchises, or excuse me, the fan bases, patience is low. We don't even really have that many 
high hopes or high expectations. We just want to win a Super Bowl. We all want to see that. Um, and so I think that's a good way to summarize is that although it would be nice if they stayed together for 20 years plus, uh, the more likely thing is, or more hopeful thing I would say, is we just keep them around to win a Super Bowl. That's really all we could, all we could hope for. Thanks again for the voicemail. Really do appreciate it. Uh, let me get to some of these comments. Um, so Vern Vern said, "We are OGs. They will never move us." And that's that's why I'm laughing at you. I agree. I think that's we're not going to, to the overseas. Like that's not a thing. The Jets are not moving over, you know, to another country. Um, they will be in New Jersey and New York until the world blows up. So, all right. Good comment, Vern Vern. Fireman Ed was considering suicide after last year. He probably was, man. Brutal. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tommy R., good to see you in the chat. He says, I wouldn't be surprised if LaFleur and Ulbrich took the job giving Sala a commitment for three to five years. That's possible. And again, that's about the range that I hope for. If we can get at least three years, I think something went right. And if LaFleur moves on to become head coach, I do not care. I remember that conversation before we hired Sala and the staff that he was bringing in. People were like, oh, he's a good coordinator. He's going to get hired for a head coach job. Good. <laughs> Fucking do it. <laughs> do it already, man. I don't care if there's a coach on our staff that's good enough to become a head coach, go the hell ahead and get that job. Congratulations. You've done your job, right? <laughs> what am I missing here? <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, Chad? Yeah. I yeah. It's like that's that, that comes afterwards and, and, and I'm all for that. I mean, that's the, that's the cost of winning and we just don't know. We haven't experienced that because we don't know what that's like. No. But that's you're all messed up in the head. I'd rather take an Adam Gase who's going to be with me for 30 years and not take me anywhere. Stability, baby. Stability. I'm just kidding. Don't, My don't Lord. roast me for that. Gumball says you would erect a status statue, excuse me, a statue of Douglas in Florham Park if we win a Super Bowl. Definitely. There would be a couple of statues built, I think. Sean Bennett says the London Jets. Can I pimp slap you for suggesting that? <laughs> Like a boom. Boom this man. I never said I wanted that. I'm saying that's a fear. That's a nightmare that exists. It's not happening, man. There's no shot. No shot. Okay. Uh, there really isn't. There's no chance. I mean, I completely disagree with you. You're, you're welcome to have your opinion. I just disagree with you. Uh, Michelle says, yeah, but look at bowls. Some people are better suited for other stuff. So if they do, well, maybe he's happy just to be good on a good team. That's true. So what she's suggesting is Bowles is a hell of a defensive coordinator. He's clearly proven that. But he's not a great head coach. And he also proved that. So maybe LaFleur would be satisfied just to be great at what he's doing, kind of like McDaniels, because McDaniels has had his uh, opportunities and he's passed on all of them. So, uh, Except for the Denver job, of course. Uh, Grant Rude does throw in a comment. He says Sala and LaFleur are very close. I would bet LaFleur is with the Jets for at least two years, hopefully three or more. But if the opportunity arises, there are no issues with letting him shoot his shot. And that's, again, how I see it. No way am I going to complain if we lose him. Of course, you're disappointed to lose him. But that means that something went really good. Like there, there was something good that happened from that. So I'm all for that. Uh, apparently Sean Bennett wants to slap Kyle, Mike, not you. So you're in the clear. That boo was not for you. It was for Kyle. Uh, guys, if you have not hit the like button yet, we're only sitting at nine. <clears throat> like Sean, Sean would never slap me. Oh no. Sean, Sean, Sean and I go, go way back. Slap the like button. If you haven't done it already. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. And if you are new to the channel, if you're tuning in after the stream has ended, or if you're here now and you're watching and you're new to the channel, we are giving away this free signed Wayne Corbett mini helmet on September 1st. We have to get to 1,000 subscribers first. Yep. You have and it. if you want John to sign it, if you want him to sign the helmet, he's willing to do it. I will not sign that. I will not ruin the helmet by signing it. <laughs> <laughs> Chat, tell him that he's not ruining it. It's only adding flavor. It's like adding it's a, it's like adding pepper to salt. No way. Sean Bennett says, Mike, my dude. Uh let's see. Boy. 
Anthony Galero says that Rich Samini should be fired from doing the media. <laughs> Grant Rude, the like button six hours before you went live. No worries, man. I appreciate that, actually. That's cool. I saw that there were a couple of likes on it before we went live. That's like one of the first times we had like three likes, I think, before the stream even started. That was awesome. Uh, Tommy R says, yes, Anthony. Beat writers are asking some very silly questions, pressing for the clickbait type of quotes. Yeah, what did you guys think about that? They, so I'll we'll go to the last uh, voicemail after this. Did you hear that there were questions asked to uh, Mr. Wilson about whether or not he had gotten his vaccine shot? What are your thoughts on that kind of Mickey Mouse bullshit? Because I find that to be Mickey Mouse bullshit. Uh, Mike, you're first. Well, they're, they're fishing for a story. They're fishing for a story. They're, it's obviously building off of Zach's mom's drama after the draft. Um, I I really think that's where – I really hope that they I, – I didn't see it. Um, i got to be 100% honest. But I hope that the Jets organization has moderators in there and they would step in and just say, as that question doesn't really pertain to the to the to the to, to the purpose of today's press conference. Zach Wilson, he question. He's, he aced it. He just said it's, oh, he? he said that's a private thing. He said that's a personal thing. I'm not yeah. answering. Whether he did, he didn't. Who cares? This is just like the mom topic, which is right. who cares? Right. Guy throws tight spiral of seed. <laughs> no, I don't care. I don't care if you don't even get your 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 chicken pox vaccine like or whatever it is so like i don't care i don't care uh chad thoughts on the on the question feel free to disagree with me well i thought that um i thought that zach handled it well um he just kind of he said you know it's a personal it's a personal choice for everybody um greg van roten was also asked about what the policy is and he kind of he kind of deterred uh, or, or took a detour from the question. He kind of said, like, hey, man, I, I don't even know what, what the numbers are right now. Um, no, I, I would prefer that that the beat writers don't ask about that. It's just, it's a hot subject. Um, and I think that they're just trying to take advantage. Like, they're trying to get clicks and views and stuff. So um, I prefer that they keep politics and, and things like that as, as much out of the game as possible. Yeah. And um, they also spoke with Woody Johnson today and they asked him about something about the Trump, you know, administration. And he basically was like, I'm not talking about that. He's like, I'm talking about football. Like, I don't know what he exactly said, but he basically dismissed it. Not, not saying like, oh, I refuse to answer that question like in a snobby way. He was just like, I'm not going to talk about that. And I, it's so the New York media sucks. I, I hate how it operates. And you're right, Mike, it is just, a, they're just looking for that response that where they can write a full article and roast them and talk mm -hmm. about them. I'm glad that neither one of them, Zach Wilson nor Woody Johnson, gave them a thing because it's ridiculous. I, in my opinion, right. ask the question, it's just ridiculous. We're not, we're not watching Zach Wilson to know if he has a fucking vaccine well, I, shot. Well, I think... I would say that I don't know what the ratio is, but this is, you know, what this gets into is how you, John, Chad, chat, each one of you in the chat. I don't, this is rhetorical, so don't, I, don't, I don't want anyone to give me an answer to this, but this pertains to the human anthropology of do, do celebrities and professional athletes have a responsibility as role models to the rest of the, rest of the community? And if you, depending on your answer to that, dictates how these reporters ask their questions. That's how that works. Oh. <clears throat> All right, let's see comments. Uh, Gumball says, have a winning season or two, then do us next. Uh, signed t-shirt from me. He wants signed sneakers from Mike, and he wants a signed hoodie from Chad. <laughs> Give me, give me that, give me that, that shoe size, that U.S. shoe size. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> uh, yes, I did get my vaccine shot. I am not uh, Zach Wilson, so I will answer that question. Uh, Tommy R says, "How many times are you going to ask him for Becton's weight?" That's true too. They are asking him about his weight. 
I mean, yeah, that seems like a kind of a borderline question. I'm okay with that one a little bit more just because it's kind of related to like, you know, playing weight, I guess, if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, it's kind of on those lines. Uh, Vern Vern says, I want a signed Miller Lite bottle from Mike. And he says, with the Wayne helmet that I... <laughs> who's, who's got the breathing going on? Who is that? The, the, the... <laughs> it's one of you two. I don't know who it is. Uh, let's see. Davis, <clears throat> excuse me. Corey Davis handled it well. He said he glared at him. Definitely did like a side look too, for sure. Um, let's see. I think Samini's question to Corey Davis was ridiculous, especially how he doubled down on it. Yeah, he like asked the same question twice in a row. Like he just, I don't know. I think Samini's an okay guy in real life. I'm sure. But he really is just a big freaking dick <laughs> when he does his job. So. <laughs> Gumball said, wait, I said I applaud Woody for doing that. Wait, did I just type that? <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm sure that felt dirty. Yeah. Sean Bennett says, I try to ignore these butt puppets, but they can't, just can't leave me alone. Sports are integrating politics into sports. Yes. It is not my cup oh. of tea. Grant thinks he called it out. He thinks, Chad, he thinks your mic is rubbing against the hoodie, and that might be causing the appearance of breathing. Okay. Oh. Oh. Uh, let's see. Um, he's a bag of dicks. And we'll move on. We'll go to the <laughs> voicemail on that one. Uh, this is going to be from a call uh, from a man that we have not heard from in a long time. Call Dele. Um, he is back. Oh, my God. He he's is, back? He's back. Back in black, indeed. Um, he leaves a good voicemail, though. And he also mistakenly misspells the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets chant. Uh, here is Kyle Dele Dele. Hey, how you doing? This is Kyle Dele, a.k.a. Dele Dele. I'm from Jersey, Elizabeth to be exact. I'm just calling in. Um, let's talk about position battles. Let's talk about, you know, competitions that are heating up league-wide, not just with the Jets. But as far as the Jets, we need to bring in a veteran quarterback to uh, to challenge our Zach Wilson. I don't feel comfortable with just Zach Wilson. You know, I like James Morgan, Captain Morgan, and Mike White. But we need a veteran presence to help Zach Wilson because, you know, eventually he's going to – with all rookies, they all struggle. Some might struggle less than others. Some might struggle more than others. But they're going to struggle all the same. All right, man. Go Jets. Jet life. J A. I mean, J E T S. Jets, Jets, Jets. All right, peace out. One love. More life. At least he was able to laugh at himself, which is, you can't live your life without being able to laugh at yourself. So, anyway, great call. Thanks, Dele, for uh, leaving us the voicemail. Uh, thoughts on the backup position? We've talked a lot about it. Um, he thinks it's critically important. So, Mike, thoughts on a veteran? To help. I agree. I I agree with I agree with them. I agree that veteran a veteran presence, especially at the quarterback position, is incredibly important because ask your, ask each of you if you were new to your job or if you're if you're if you're if you're a veteran in your position, think back to when you were new, or if you're new, then you should know this off the top of your head. I don't care how nice your boss is. I try to be really nice to the people I work with, uh, the people I supervise. But I know even as nice as I am and as personable as I am, you can never escape the title that you carry. In which case, Zach will never open up to Michael Floor as he would as he would a, a veteran brother, a, you know, a, a veteran quarterback who he would see as his brother. So Nick Foles or, or put anyone in that position. It doesn't need to be Foles. I picked Foles because I thought that's who is in the best position to come in. I think part of what a young quarterback needs is someone to talk to where they don't feel it will be used against them in the, in the room, in the off season or anything like that. And I do agree that that's a big part of being able to feel comfortable to ask questions. I mean, I'm sure Michael Floor is like, hey, you got a question? You ask me. Nothing is too stupid. Nothing is too dumb. I'm sure Michael Floor is, he's basically got it stamped on his forehead. But 
I know, having started a new career and started a new job, it doesn't matter how accessible your your boss is or how personable it is, because you still see them as your boss. You still see them as, I have to impress this person or else I'm not going to live up to the hype, to the draft position I was drafted at. I would be nice if I felt more comfortable or if I had someone who lived through this that I could talk to. And that's exactly what Deli's talking about. You just crushed that. I'm giving you a just chant. You came out a little rusty at first, but you're. you're I didn't come out rusty. Still, I came out smooth. I was. Sad. I was KY'd all over. <laughs> Listen, man, you you nailed that. You nailed that. That's a really really good way to put it too. The way you explained it. It's, it's no matter how comfortable you are with your boss, you're going to feel much more comfortable talking to a coworker than a boss. Uh, Chad, anything you want to add on top of that? I think he he made a great analogy there. Right, and I don't want to belabor the point. I'll just say that beyond the Jamison Crowder contract negotiations, this is the the second most baffling non-move of the offseason. I mean, the, the, the team point. is always... Yeah, like like the team is always going to do like they're, you're not always going to agree with everything the team does. Um, but the, I just I don't understand this move. I, then again, I'm not them. I'm not in the front office. I, I, I'm sure they have their reasons. I don't know why they haven't made this move. I know that they they made an attempt to get the guy from uh, New England whose name is escaping me. But um Nonetheless, this this has just been a baffling move, and it looks like they're not doing it. Unless there's a camp casualty, it looks like they're not going to do it. Yeah, that's the thing that they, I think Sala actually said in his presser. He's like, they're not really actively looking, and they're not really worried about it. Um, I think that is baffling, and I agree with you. I agree with Carl Dele. I agree with Mike. I think that it's it's a mistake to not have a veteran in the locker room say what you want about Sam Darnold and him not panning out. But I think that we can all agree that Josh McCown being on the team was good for Sam. And it wasn't just Jeremy Bates that he was talking to. It was obviously Josh McCown. McCown was glued to him. You know, he was attached to him by the hip. And I think that's a good thing to have right. that's experienced the NFL like McCown has the guy I'm, I'm really hoping for at this point, I was hoping for Nick Mullins, who Vern Vern just mentioned. Um, real quick before I forget, Vervain, welcome to the show, dude. I've never seen yeah. you that before. Happy to have you. Hope you consider subscribing. Thanks for commenting. I will read yours in just a second. Uh, Mullins is gone. So the guy that I'm really hoping for now is Nick Foles. And if you think about Nick Foles, he's great because... He has experienced the roller coaster. In the Super Bowl. Right. He has experienced the entire <laughs> roller coaster ride of being in the NFL. Insane. He has. He's there. He's performed poorly. He's performed exceedingly well. He's had high expectations, low expectations. He's won a Super Bowl. He's lost in the playoffs. He literally has experienced it all. And so. If Nick Foles shakes free, which I do think will happen, I think that the Bears are going to be in a situation where they have to cut him if they don't trade him because they have Andy Dalton and they have Justin Fields. Why would they keep a third quarterback? Right. I think if he gets free, they absolutely should go after Nick Foles. I think that would be a huge mistake to not go after him. And I think you could even make the case to right. just trade for him and rework and it's, him. you got to do it now. What are we gonna do? You're gonna let you know what Zach, hopefully not, but let's just say you're gonna let Zach flutter around for a season or two before you bring in a veteran quarterback? And what? And we're talking about him building again. I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem it doesn't make sense. I mean, we did all this, right? Like we went out, we went through all those iterations I talked about, you know, you know, getting your asset, protecting your asset, giving your asset tools to produce. And you're not going to give them. You're not going to give them one of the biggest things, which is the intangibles of someone to talk to. And I and I saw someone in the chat was like, "Well, who's the quarterback coach?" True, true, but they're still considered a coach. They still have that title. You still know that that quarterback coach direct reports to Michael Four, right? And who direct reports to Sala and everything. I, to me, 
to me, it has to be someone without a coach title. I think it has to be, you have to give him someone he feels comfortable with. Yep. <clears throat> awesome. Um, Sean Bennett says Nick Foles is too inconsistent. We're not really counting on him to be consistent. We're really counting on him just as the, like we said a couple of times now, like the mentor, you know, the person he can count on. You know, if he throws an interception, he can go to, to Nick Foles and say, like, hey, what the hell just happened? I don't even know. Like, he can go to him and ask him. Um, that's the idea with that move. So. And, and the way I look at it, man, is like, you get Nick Foles, you basically get a, another quarterback coach. Because mm-hmm. most of the time, these quarterbacks become quarterback coaches, right? So, so you'd be adding to your coaching staff, even if he doesn't play it down, just like McCown did. I think mm-hmm. McCown is a perfect example of that. Well said. I agree. Uh, this is a good comment to wrap this up, and we will get into the first topic of the night. Uh, Vern Vern says, Zach isn't the type of guy that needs a mentor. I'm unconcerned about the backup situation. There are people who agree with you, Vern Vern, so don't, just because we disagree with you does not mean that we are right and you are wrong. Uh, there are people that disagree with us, so don't feel uh, isolated by yourself here. Uh, Tommy I R. Need a, Go ahead. We need an example of that, because I think the ones that pop out to me, the ones that pop out to me, of course, of course the most traditional one is, is Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre, in which case Aaron Sat, which isn't this, this isn't necessarily apples to apples. Even Brady, you had Bledsoe. I think the only one that I'm not 100 percent sure about, and I need I need your football IQ, John or Chad, which is who 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 was who was at Indy when Peyton was there? Uh, well, he had Bruce Arians coaching him early in his career. I don't know about a quarterback though. I don't know who the backup was, but but Bruce Arians was his QB coach, and you know he with Bruce Arians, you might as well have had two uh, coaches. He's he's a guru. I mean, he's an excellent, yeah. excellent coach. He coached Ben Roethlisberger. Right. I, I guess for Ver, who, who was that? Who said that comment? Was it Ver? I, I would need an example of where a quarterback has come in without any veteran presence. In that. I'm not saying that they didn't go a season or two without a veteran presence, but I'm just saying you know, a quarterback who came in and just dominated without – Without any, without any, without, without any better in the back of them. I'd be, I'd be mm-hmm. curious on who those examples are. I'm sure there are some. I'm just not thinking of any. Yep. Who was, who was Baker's? Who was Baker? I, I guess he had, um, Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod, yeah. So, all right. We will move on. Uh, well, there's just a couple more. There's a couple more comments I'll get to, and then we really will move on. Uh, Vern Vern says, I wouldn't give up a pick for Foles. I agree. It would have to be a super late pick or no pick at all to acquire him. I think the more likely thing is, is he gets cut though. I don't think he's going to be traded. I don't think people are going to want to trade for him because they know the bears have to move on from him anyway. Uh, Vervain again, welcome to the channel, dude. He says, I've been watching the videos for a while. You're one of the best channels on YouTube. So finally I had to subscribe and join a live chat. That's super cool. So he's been watching for a while. He's one of those stalkers. See, He's one of those stalkers, dude, but we're happy to have you. That's awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying the content. It's very kind of you to give us a compliment. Can you, can you pause real quick? I'm sorry. <laughs> Great, Rube. RG3 had no vet QB mentor. RG3 didn't put up anything. That's not a good example. I'm well, no. Well, wait the a minute. Statement he, was, the statement he, was, if you have a top-talent quarterback, they don't need a veteran presence. I'm not putting RG3 in that, in that boat. I need a different example. To be fair, though, Grant Rude isn't wrong. Grant Rude is talking about how Robert Griffin III dominated year one, which he did. He was rookie of the year. But that was considered a fluke. That was considered – that was a that was a combination of factors. That wasn't like he came in and, like, parted the sea. No, I, he was pretty good his first year, dude. You can take – you can knock wow. – you can, you can knock RG3 all you want. He was I, a – beast his I'm not year. counting that I'm not counting that example I'm not I'm just I'm, me as me as a person I'm not counting that you can you can get into an argument with Grant Root I'll, I'll let you guys do that that's fine uh Please, let's see Grant <laughs> Gumball says at this point my bigger concern about Wilson is how he'll handle taking a hit from a 350 pound defensive lineman it doesn't even need to be a 350 pound defensive lineman how about a 250 defensive lineman running full speed uh that's a great... I know he he looks like astonishingly small it i mean i know he's 6'3 but just watching that interview today like i know like we're all getting older and it's weird to see like kids kids 
Yeah. I, he's he's a kid. He's a kid. But, but he just he. I mean, I'm hoping. Obviously, everything works out on the field. But he just, he looks very small. I just he just I. I yep. No, nope, you're wrong. You're not wrong. All right, we are going to move on. It has been a lot of conversation. Oh, we got one more. Sorry, I got to do it. RG3 was a revelation in his rookie year. It went downhill after that. Yes, agreed completely. <laughs> RG, <laughs> RG3 couldn't mentor. Oh, yeah, I got it. RG3 couldn't mentor my hand to the bottle of lotion <laughs> while watching a Victoria's Secret runway <laughs> show. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, Sean, can, can you give Sean a sound effect? Because I thought that was hilarious. Whether you, you move, whether you agree with the comment or not, I just thought it was funny as hell. We like funny. Funny is allowed on the channel. All right, we are going to officially move on to the next topic, guys. Uh, we are going to move right now. And to be perfectly honest with you, we spent an, a, literally an exact hour on the first segment, so we will not spend a forever and a day on all of these segments. So keep that in mind. Um, the first topic of the night is going to be Flight 2021. I don't know about you. I'm, again, I'm a teacher. My last day I have to report is Monday. This is when it drops. I will be getting some beers. I will have my wife next to me, and we are going to binge watch the whole thing on Monday night. Flight 2021, if you do not know, if, you're, if you haven't been paying attention and you're watching right now, Flight 2021 is a mini series that the New York Jets filmed and produced themselves, and it is apparently going to give us a very, very up close, behind the scenes look of the entire off season. So it's going to cover the Robert Sala. I believe part of it's going to show the Robert Sala interview, like literally the Zoom call, and it's going to walk us through that. I imagine there's going to be meetings where they held where they discussed Robert Sala and how they wanted to make him the head coach. It's going to take us to the NFL draft. It's going to take us through free agency. I imagine part of it will be Woody Johnson coming back. That'll be part of it in flight 2021. So essentially it's a, it's a small piece of what kind of like a hard knocks was, but not with essentially practices involved. How are you guys anticipating this? Do you not really care I am interested to hear what you guys think in the chat about Flight 2021. Most people online are losing their minds and they're ready to watch it. Um, I will go to Chadwick first. Chad, by the way, is it Chadwick or is it just Chad? Uh, it's Chad Pennington, please. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Chad Pennington. <laughs> uh, Chad, how are you feeling about Flight 2021? Are you hyped or are you not really uh, all that crazy about it? No, I'm hyped. Where, where the Jets generally fail on the field they succeed in the production room yeah I, we have to we have to give credit where credit is due they ha they have to have one of the best uh social media and production teams out there because they've done this the last two seasons and as on cue now that we're talking about it, i'm forgetting the name of the of the series that they did flight 2021 uh, no not oh. the ones that they did last summer and the year <sighs> before that um the the hard knock yeah yeah i got you i know what you're talking about. i don't remember what they were called someone's gonna get it but um but those were great productions the bills did something similar but nobody watched that because uh screw the bills but no they i love the production i'm looking forward to it i guess that we're not, one jets drive thank my, you my wife she threw it in there nice job michelle yes. so i think that they're gonna do the same thing with with this i think they're going to um I think they're going to probably release one per week, unless they already said they're going to do all four at once. I think um, it's dropping all at once. I think. Pretty sure. Right. Um. So yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be good. I, I'm I know it's going to be very well produced because it's being produced by the same team. So for that reason, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, cool. Uh, Mike, thoughts on watching it, getting excited for it, not getting excited for it? What do you how are you feeling about Flight 2021? Um, I don't really have a strong internet connection, so I'm not getting too hyped about it. Okay, fair enough. Not all that excited. Interesting. Um, yes, I did, sir. She is a smart cookie. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Grant Rude says, Flight 2021 ramps my excitement levels to a solid 2 out of 10. 
Chad's production room comment is exactly why. Just win. I don't care about the rest. And that's a fair take. It does make you a little bit of a Grinch, though, Mr. Grant Rude. Um, yeah, no, I don't. I don't care. It's all good. If you're not excited about, it, I understand. It is just literally. It is just a hype. That's all it is. They're trying to sell tickets. That is mostly what this is about. They're just trying to get people interested in the team. Um, having said that, I'm a fanboy and I love the Jets, so I will consume this very quickly. And I'm just excited to see that behind the scenes. You know, I want to hear more about Joe Douglas, his thoughts on Robert Sala. You know, after that Zoom call they had, what were his initial thoughts? Because I think we're going to get those. I think we're going to hear those conversations. Like, damn, he really impressed in that interview, didn't he? Like, I think they're going to really show that stuff. Um, and I'm just interested to see what Robert Sala said in the interview. I think they will show some of it. So it gets right, me. and that's go ahead. And that's the key. It it'll be like any other, like a Randy Lang article, where you know they're gonna. It's gonna be a fluff piece. It's gonna be like an SNY thing. <laughs> Like a, you know, like the the SNY shows. It's like a, it's like a season breakdown. It's, it's like the 2009 season where my dad cried in front of me uh, <laughs> about about the season they had. I I get it. Hey, so did I, I. I'll be I'll be all about it. I will say though, I say that there's here's where I'll take this as a spinoff, John, and I don't mean to to make this topic longer than it needs to be. But what would you rather have? Would you would you be more amped up about a season that? about your upcoming season and what's being done, or would you be more amped up about what your team did, assuming that your team had a productive season? What what type of production video is more enticing to you? A season wrap up or a preseason hype? That's a really good question. Um, I think I lean towards the the preseason just because it is such an exciting time because there is all this optimism. The season isn't over. So I do gravitate, excuse me, I gravitate towards the the hype stuff um <clears throat> and again i'm not i'm not like i'm not gonna be sitting there watching it going like f yeah like this is gonna be like the best season ever we're going to the super bowl it's really just more or less i want to see that behind the scenes stuff that we don't have access to otherwise mm -hmm. so that's the part that Although gets the hyped. season so the, the difference is if the season's crap then obviously a a season wrap-up where you are satisfied with the season will stand the length of time better than obviously preseason hype videos for a season that might not go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just cause where there's all this optimism too. All right, cool. Oh, go ahead, Chad. No, and look, when, when we were growing up, well, I know when, when a lot of the guys in the chat were growing up, we didn't have this, you know, um, we, we didn't even have a Sunday ticket when we were growing up, you know? So like we had to go out of our way to, to see the games and, um, we're living in a golden age of of access to the team and access to the facility and uh, behind the scenes and, and and even the the fan channels, you know, us and what everybody else is doing. It's it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. I mean, I, you know, I remember having to, you know, s sneak into bars to go watch the, the games on uh, uh, whatever bar had Sunday ticket just to see it. And then. You know, you're hoping to catch ESPN for a couple highlights, and now you can see. I mean, we're getting we're getting everything, and it's just it's a great time to to be a fan. Okay, old man. No, I'm just kidding. I agree. I agree with you. You're right. You <laughs> are right about that. It is like instantaneous like gratification. There's wrap up shows everywhere. Um, so yeah, instantaneous stuff. <laughs> uh, let's see. Grant Rude does say that they all will be available at the same time. That's correct. Um, Sean Bennett says hype video, but hey, and Grant Root says it's so fluffy. Vern Vern says, I hope they show their reaction interviewing Marvin Lewis. What the fuck were they doing <laughs> interviewing Marvin Lewis? Oh man. I, I was actually, I actually thought for a hot minute that was who we were going to hire. I really did. And a lot of people, uh, online were saying that would be a good hire. I remember, uh, Woody or excuse me, Damian Woody. Uh, former Jet offensive lineman was talking about how that would be a great hire. Um, I wasn't buying it, but I wasn't interested. All right, let's see. <clears throat> Michelle says, if they suck, nobody wants to recount that, Mike. The recap video, what you were talking about. Uh, but Sean Bennett, this, Sean Bennett, he's saying season wrap-up show is what he would prefer as well. So, 
Um, I think I would go season wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas Hewitt. Because you can't take that away. Oh, this is true. Uh, Thomas Hewitt has been on the channel before, and he's been talking about Marino. And he says, this season won't be crap. We got Zach Marino. Get ready, boys. He is hyping him up. I, I think it's because of his release that he's connecting, you know, the, the Marino Wilson dots there. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Michelle said Brew River for hours. <laughs> if you guys remember Brew River watching yeah, football yeah. games. Yeah. Great play. Yeah. We used to watch, we used to watch the games there. Uh, let's see. The new culture started when JJ gave the reins of the team to JD and let him work his magic. Look at what we, excuse me, look at what that did for us. We are the most improved franchise we've ever had. Yeah, it's a big jump from 2-14 and 14 to now. The proof is still in the pudding, of course. We still need to actually do it on the field, but it feels like we're going to have a pretty big improvement, even if we don't make the playoffs uh, this coming season. <laughs> uh, all right, we're going to move on. We don't need to spend any more time on this conversation. I am just excited about it, and I am really looking forward to not having to go to work the following day. So I'll rub that salt in your wounds, guys. Um, I'll be on my ass the next day. All right, next topic. It's very quick and very easy. It happened a couple of days ago. Crowder restructures his contract. I think this is a really big deal. Um, I think I went to Chad first last. Is that correct? Yes? No? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did I, yeah. Okay, so you, Mike, you're up. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Crowder restructuring of his contract? Uh, go for it. I think it's a good thing. Um, I will say this, unless someone has the details, I haven't been able to find the details of the renegotiation. So um, I, I would say that was probably part of the deal so that Crowder can can wheel and deal for a follow on, you know, because, you know, I, I would imagine, well, usually I don't make, well, sometimes they do make, I'm thinking out loud, but I would imagine that that was a big clause in the contract to protect him from taking a hit on a follow on contract with another team. So, I'm just taking. I'm just talking in assumptions of what that renegotiation was, which was it made room for the Jets to keep Crowder on team for probably the reasons that we, us, New York, New York, NYJ today talked about a week ago, two weeks ago, about his veteran leadership and what his true role on the team is, in more of a behind the scenes kind of ethereal sense, which is for him to kind of be a, a guardian to this to this to this up and coming wide receiver core. Um, to make plays on certain downs and certain play calls by Michael Floor. Um, and probably the Jets were like, listen, you're probably not getting a lot of calls. We really want you to be on the on the team for the season. We want to set you up for next season, which is why we're going to make the terms of the contract negotiations private. Let's 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 just let's just do this. Let's see where it goes and let's have fun. It's kind of that's what I so I don't know. I want to make sure I hit the point, which is, what do I think of it? I think it's great. I think it, it keeps, we all, at least I think the three of us agree that, that Crowder does have a role to play with the Jets. I do think he can contribute on and off the field. What the weight, what the percentage split of that, I think is different for each of us and how we see Crowder. Um, but we're able to do it and still set ourselves up for a huge 22 off season, which is what we're looking forward to. So, yeah. Good point. Uh, Chad, you got any thoughts on the Crowder restructuring? We do not know the terms of the deal. Like Mike said, you have to imagine he took at least a couple mil, you know, off of his original salary. Um. So yeah, I I won't I won't belabor the point, but I disagree with their move. I understand it was a business decision, and it all comes down to a business decision. I just wish they wouldn't have done it. I mean, he was the receiving or he was the leading receiver the last two seasons. Um, by all reports, there was no real reason uh, financially to, to have to force him to take a pay cut. I don't like the message that it sends to the rest of the rest of the league, the rest of the players. I wish they wouldn't have done it. Wow. I'm glad that Crowder resigned, though. I see. Yeah, I, Chad held that in before the stream started. I did not know. You were yeah. coming in with that firing pin, Chad. That's pretty awesome. I'm, I'm liking it because I'm reacting live <clears throat> yeah. on camera to, to that statement. That's interesting. I will respectfully disagree. Um, and here's why. It's not because it does it, – you're right. It's it's not a great thing for Crowder. He's not loving life. You know, he's losing millions of dollars. 
um, over this. The, pr the only problem is, is that it is a business. Like the NFL, the teams, and you know that, Chad. I'm not saying anything that you don't already know. But the thing is, is it's a business, and Crowder was owed nothing. He had no guaranteed money on his contract. So <clears throat> if he had played hardball, which he could have done, if he really wanted to, he absolutely could have said, F you, I'm not taking a pay cut. Like he totally could have dug his heels in. But the problem is the Jets probably, we don't know that for sure yet, but they probably are giving him more money than what any other team would have given him on the 100%. market. 100%. 100%. I would bet you the reason why that happened was because there was no one knocking on that door. Right. For trade, you mean, specifically? Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. And then, you know, at that point, it's like, you know, you'd rather get paid something than nothing at right. that point. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think, I think they got, I think this was to me, to me, this is where you see Joe D come in. Cause I think that was a pure Joe D move. That's, that's his savviness. He knows he, and he, and he's able to deliver it without being to your point, Chad, without, I bet you that the way that went down, and the way they handled Crowder, where Crowder still probably felt that he was valued, that 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 the organization wasn't trying to screw him, but that at the same time the organization is trying to win. The organization is yep. coming out of a two and fourteen season, yeah. And they probably took, sat Crowder down and said, "You can be a big part of this team. Help us, help us even more by meeting us halfway, and let's get this deal done. We'll and do I'll our part." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, you're good. I just wanted to throw in something, and you're good. Uh, I was just gonna say. They are not effing him over. This is crazy to think about. Crowder's been in the NFL for a while now. He's going to be 28 next offseason. 28. So he's going to get a second, well, sorry, a third contract in his 20s. And that's really, yeah. really rare in the NFL. So no, the Jets aren't doing him a favor by any means. They are taking a pay cut from him. But he's still in a really good spot. He's obviously where he'd like to be because if he really, really wanted to, he could have dug his heels in. He could have forced them to cut him, which absolutely they could have. He could have done. Um, so, all in all, Mike's said it already. It's a big win for the team. It helps us now, and it will help us in the twenty-two off season, like Mike pointed out, because we're going to have that money. I don't know what they're going to do with. The money that they have right now they had the most cap space in the nfl prior to this move and that's kind of what you were alluding to chad is that we already have all this money so why are we doing this i fully believe the jets are going to make at least two moves before the season starts and i think that if go ahead if one of them is morgan moses then sign me up that's the move that's the move i want more than a cornerback, a veteran cornerback, more than even a backup quarterback. If we can land Morgan Moses and stick that big dude on the right side, we are going to bully people. We have a really good offensive line if we land him. And depth. So <clears throat> that move, the Crowder move, it doesn't just free up space for this year. It's going to be a rollover effect because we've got this humongous chunk of money. It's almost like 25, 26 mil. But and that's the point. It that's what I'm saying. Like it wasn't necessary to the Crowder move. The renegotiation was not necessary to free up space to sign a Morgan Moses. They just did it to do it. They that's did it, but they did it because they knew they had the leverage, and they also knew that it, even with like you said, they don't need it for the Moses move. But the money that they have right now will roll over, and they'll have even more money in the 22 off season. And I know that Joe Douglas, like Mike has said, he is aligning the stars. Like he's not just playing the short game. He's also planning the long game. And so that move isn't just about this off season and the cap space. So I love it. I love that we disagree. We don't have enough disagreements on the, uh, on the channel. I feel like we always are, dis excuse me, yeah, always, true, always, <laughs> always, uh, we're always agreeing. So anyways, let's go back to the comments. We do have a lot to catch up on. Uh, Sean Bennett does say, I wonder who Marcus may be given a new contract. And again, this move also helps with that move. And so that's kind of what I think the next move could be is Marcus May. Now the OTAs are over. Now that minicamp is over, 
the dust is going to settle a little bit. It's going to get a little bit quiet. I believe firmly that's our next move. Before we even sign Moses, I believe they will try to sign, or extend, I should say, Marcus May. And having the cap space, the extra cap space, it allows them to do that move. Morgan Moses, roll over into 22. It's open many, many options for the New York Jets because of that move. So, <clears throat> uh, cool. Uh, yeah, I think, Sean, but I agree. Bryce Hall right now is the number one cornerback on the team, but I think his ceiling right now is probably, at best, I think his, his best shot is, is going to be cornerback two, but right now he's going to be counted on to be the number one. It's a little bit concerning, but I think with our pass rush being as good as we expect it to be, I think it could be okay. Uh, Thomas Hewitt says, not a fan of teams not honoring the contract, albeit a bad contract. Um, unless you push off the money to future years. He took a $4.3 million haircut. <laughs> Was that, is that a fact? I don't know if that's the case. 4.3, is that what they saved? I've heard that. That's a lot of moolah, though. That's a good move. That's a Joe Douglas move. A ruthless, a, a ruthless move, but a really good move. New England does it all the time. No one gives New England heat for it. Yeah. They also win championships. And isn't that what you just wanted? Did you just <laughs> say, I want to just win one? Right, but free, but free agents will take a cut, especially older free agents. They'll take a pay cut if it means winning a cha a shot, to, an actual shot to win a championship. It means a lot to them. Right, but there was we no one calling him. There was no one calling that man. They could have cut him. I think if they if he had dug his heels, I think they would have cut him. Yeah, they probably would have. But we. We should be opening our doors and doing everything possible to say, hey, free agents, come here. We've got a good we're not gonna try to screw you over. We're not gonna play this kind of hard ball unless we have to. We're not gonna do these unnecessary moves. We want you to come here. We no, know we're not gonna win a championship this year, but we're that, building a good organization. Yeah, that doesn't work because that look at what Dallas got into. That's the exact model that, that, that the Joneses family tried to do and they got they they're just coming out of the dark ages for them with because of dad they tried yeah. that very that very philosophy and it it only works chad if you have the coaching personnel to put the proof in the pudding the money doesn't get you the championship without without the, the development and the cohesion and what the coaching and the front office do the joneses are the perfect example of that going bad um i'll just before, because we're all di disagreeing here, and it's great. Um, I will say the I think the Marcus May extension will will smooth a lot of waters that that Chad is feeling right now. If we do extend Marcus May, it's a very good look for the Jets, and it's the look that I think they need at this point. We we have gotten into a habit of not giving second contracts out to guys who deserve them. I'm not really referring to Jamal Adams in this circumstance. I am referring. Uh, you know, to some other players. And I think that Marcus May has earned it. And I think that if he gets his second contract from the Jets, I think that's a really good look, and it will help this not look quite as bad in Chad's eyes. Do you agree, Chad? I that? agree. Yeah, yeah. I do. Okay. I agree. We we don't, we don't, for various reasons, give out a lot of second contracts, at least not in the last five years. So, yes, that would go over really well. I think so, too. All right, got to go to the chat. Uh, Vern Vern says the money might come in handy. Who knows what shakes free on cut day? That's how I feel too. Not just Morgan Moses. There might be more heads rolling around on the uh, the free agent block. We could add even more talent. We'll just have to wait and see. Jeremy Cravat. Jeremy, I don't recall seeing you. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the stream. We are happy to see you. Hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Hope you enjoy the content. He says it's so simply... He says it's simply the Jets not wanting to pick up the option, but wanting to sign him as a at a different price. This is the truth. <clears throat> they want to keep him, but it's at their price. Uh, Sean Bennett. He knew the open market was dry right now. Yeah, it's really dry. There are some veterans right now just sitting. They're just sitting. Morgan Moses is a really good offensive tackle, and he is literally sitting. Nobody's making a move for him. Eighth best run blocker, according to PFF last year. I think he was like 17th against the pass of all offensive tackles in the entire National Football League. So there's really good players, him <clears throat> specifically, just sitting. And so if Crowder had gotten into a spot where he had cut, and, or excuse me, dug his heels in, 
it could have been bad for him. It, it would have been not only would he have been paid less, he would have been sitting. And I don't think he wants to do that. Good point. Uh, Darren Tewksbury, another name I don't recall. Guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Do you recall this name? No, do not. Nope. Welcome. Glad to see you in the chat. It's always good to see new people. Um, welcome you to the channel. Darren says, I don't think I could see any of our previous GMs doing what Joe Douglas did. That is why he is better than the last three, at least. Agreed. And I'm hoping we get into the comp picks game in the near future. Letting guys go to free agency and we get compens excuse me, compensatory picks back. That's what good GMs will do also is use the compensatory draft picks as a tool to building the team. Tommy R. I think JD will use the save money once teams start making cuts. We've seen that now a couple of times in the chat, and I think it's a great strategy if that is what he's thinking. Let's see. Um, Jeremy says players opt out when it's their option and sign for more. It's the business. Yep, that's how I view it too. It's just the business side of this. <laughs> how many contracts from McDumdum has JD had to fix or get rid of? Yeah, and he's still working on it. That's the crazy thing. We still have the Mosley contract on the roster or on the books, I should say. So he's still actively dealing with the mess messy contracts that McCagnan uh, had. And we still have dead money from Tremaine Johnson. That's hard to yeah. believe, too. We have dead money on the books because of Tremaine Johnson. So, uh, <laughs> Shad's just, like, shaking his head. <laughs> oh, my God. Gumball says, McCagnan would have given him a five-year deal with $95 million. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably accurate. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness, McDumdum. That's a good one. Uh, bring Sherman in. That's I agree. Hey, Sean, I would like Sherman. I would like Moses. And I would like us to roll some money over into 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I agree. Moses is a must at this point. We need him on the team. Uh, let's see. You don't overpay to be nice. Jeremy's on point tonight. Exactly. I love this. Jeremy, you're exactly. doing a great job. Keep it up. Buddy. That's my point. No one was coming to the jets, even though we had deep pockets last year. Yep. Who was coming to the jets? Just because we're going to pay them. So but we that's, pay them to, to be Chad's going to Chad's gonna clap back. Chad's going to clap back. But the point is, <laughs> is when you're not winning and you're in a less than, uh, uh, less than favorable environment for a player, why would a player want to have to go and live in New York City or, or, or one of the surrounding areas and pay all this taxes and deal with the traffic? Brandon Marshall used to have to take a helicopter to practice. Okay. He did. Nobody wants to deal with that and be on a losing team and be second fiddle to the Giants year after year right. unless they're getting paid. You're not winning championships. Not that, you're though. not the Patriots. You're not the Chiefs. You're not the Ravens. You, you that's that's our one well, that's thing that we the have is to be able to that. be able to pay for the money will never the money will never build the type of franchise you're looking for. It's part of it. But Robert Sala's <laughs> name and pedigree has carried much more recruiting abilities than our pockets have. The pockets only come into effect when the player believes that they're going to a team that's actually gonna make them better for their career and not just be I, I a can money feel the tension um, in the air. I can and, feel it in and my that's plums. The hope. And that's the hope, but that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> if if that if that's this time next year, that'd be great. Let me let me also tell you these players will these players will take every tent you have. So, and I and if I was a player, I'd be the same way. I tell my agent the same way. I want every penny I can get, whether sure. I'm producing or not. Because then it really calls into question: Do I really want to? Would I want to go any higher on Crowder? I think I would have rather cut him. Yeah. Hey, man, it's great that we're having to finally, finally, the blood is out. I can smell it. <laughs> it's great. Uh, Vervain, he ding, says, ding. yeah, man, it's great. It's good for the channel. Uh, Vervain says, Morgan Moses gives us some major insurance in the event that Makai is unable to play with his foot injury. Yes. It also makes Fant a backup if Makai is healthy, which I think is also a good thing. Uh, another new name to the channel. Don't recognize the name. Doesn't mean that he hasn't been here before, but Sir Mansier, new new face that I don't re excuse me, a new name that I don't remember. Welcome, sir. Glad to have you here. He says a two million dollar bonus, five mil guaranteed is what they gave Crowder, according to what he said. I haven't read that yet, but 
That's a fair deal. And listen, Crowder would probably never have gotten that on the open market. So how bitter can he really be? Because if the Jets had cut him, he wasn't going to make the money. He was zero guaranteed money. Zero. The Jets held every bit of leverage in this situation. Um, all right. Vern Vern, business at the end of the day. And Crowder understands that if you listen to his media day. Yep. And he said that. And he was very professional. There was no angst in his voice. Very professional. Uh, Jeremy says, I wonder how much Steve Nelson would cost. Dude, it's hard to judge. It's hard to judge right now because there's no market right now because nobody's signing anybody. It might be cheaper than we think. It might only take four, five, six million to get a deal done with him. I don't know, though. I have no idea. Crowder could be moved during the season for a pick. That would be surprising, but I think they could technically do that if they really wanted to. If Elijah Moore, if Denzel Mims, if Corey Davis, even Keelan Cole, Braxton Berrios, who we'll be talking about later, if these guys all look good and everybody's healthy, sure, ship him off. I don't know if there'd be much of a market for him, though, in the trade. I don't think people are going to want him uh, because he's going to be at a, he's, he's in a contract year. Kev Chatta, welcome back, sir. He says JD still has to sign top rookies and has 10 to 15 million during the season, so 25 mil is not all that. Yeah, he does still need to sign um, Wilson. That's a great point. That's a That's great a very good point. point. Yep. It's a great point. Wilson, Moore, and Elijah Vera Tucker all are unsigned right now. So, and that'll get done. They're gonna. They were. I'm sure they were anticipating not getting it done before minicamp and OTAs, so they just said, let's just wait till after that. I don't think it's going to be an issue, personally. So, we'll see. Uh, let's see. The message the restructure sends is, if you want to get paid by the Jets, you will be worth it. No more Jets tax. I think that's a good point, too. Don't have the mindset, oh, we know they're going to not want to drive in traffic. Sorry, Chad, I'm knocking on you a little bit. <laughs> uh you know, we got to we got to just make these players, you know, earn their money. And if there's if there's an advantage to be gained, do it because it's a business at the end of the day. Ah, James. Welcome, dude. We can't wait to have you back next week. By the way, guys, if you haven't checked out last week's podcast, it's a freaking doozy, man. It's awesome. James broke down Elijah Vera Tucker. He broke down Quinn and Williams live on the channel. He's going to be coming back on Wednesday next week. He's going to do some more breakdowns for us. So, yeah, James, I agree. Spend some money, get some more veterans in here. I agree. And get those rookies signed, too. Yeah. Gumball's talking about Derek Stingley again. I think he's brought him up many a time. He really likes Derek Stingley. I just don't think we're going to be in a position to draft him. Uh, let's see. Gitmo says, why is it a problem to renegotiate Crowder but not a problem screwing Fant? I don't know if it's the same situation. So signing a better guard, or excuse me, a better offensive lineman that would put Fant on the bench, I don't necessarily see that as screwing him over because, number one, Moses is just plain old better. Yeah. Like, what are we getting into right now? We're getting into a popularity contest? Well, are no, we like, I, we were... I, think, I think what he's trying to say is, is it's like, how is it any different? But my point is it's different because... Crowder was a contract situation. Fan, if we were able to replace him, that's just the way the business works. If you can be replaced, you're replaced. Like in the NFL, if there's somebody that they can get to replace you, that's what they're going yeah, to it's do. All about, it's all about what you're worth. Yeah. I, I see what Gitmo's getting at, but Gitmo's right. It's all about what you're worth and how your contract is structured. And then depending on those two factors, me, the general manager, or Chad, the general manager, and me or Chad, the player, are going to have a talk about what that means, right? And what does that mean? If my mm -hmm. worth is poor and my contract is loose, then the general manager is probably going to say, "I it's in my responsibility to protect this team and to ensure this team is on track to be successful. And given your contribution value being low and your contract due to your agent being loose, I have to have this conversation with you. I want you to be part of the organization. I think you can contribute, but probably in a different way than what you think you currently are doing. But if, you're, if your value is medium or high and your contract is tight, then there's nothing we really need to talk about at that yeah. point, right? I, mm -hmm. I really think we're taking this. I understand having the, the 
the symbol of the team, you know, making sure that, that the jet logo symbolizes the bat signal up in the sky that we give hope. But at the end of the day, there's not enough there's not enough in our coffers to be Robin Hoods and throw it on the streets for all the poor. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm laughing, not laughing at you. I'm laughing at the comment because it's just it's very well said. I agree, I agree with you. I want I want I want the Jet logo to be a beacon, the same way, the same way Green Bay is, or the same way Indy is, or the same way New England is. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. um, but do I think money can get you there? No, it needs. Those teams carry that 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 reputation for a number of different factors, and it's also it's also we're not respect. we're not talking about this anymore. The conversation has been beaten raw. It's we, respect we, that. It's, it's it respect. is of course, of course, of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Uh, Vervain says it's interesting to hear that Isaiah Dunn. He's talking about the undrafted cornerback that we signed. He says has been with the ones. Not the rookie I expected to step up, but good to hear he's been playing well, even if it's early. There might we may be in a position where we end up maybe cutting one of the rookies that we drafted. Um, if if Isaiah Dunn steps up and is better than Jason Pinnock, if he's better than Brandon Eccles, it would not shock me at all if one of those guys we don't keep on the roster. I mean, I don't know if that's going to happen because we don't have a lot anyway in the cornerback room, but. It's great that Isaiah Dunn is stepping up and he's just turning heads. Uh, DJ Bianame is the New York Daily News reporter, and he's talking about how he's just been popping. He's been looking really good in practice. So, All right. By the way, Chad, you got a bunch of compliments. People are loving what you're saying. Uh, Kev Chatta and Legend Killa, he, they all think you're making great points. So, weren't you're, Smart you, people. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Us disagreeing with you. It's, it's because we're the two voices, but there are other voices as well that agree with you. So, Yeah, and Sean Bennett, he says he loves the debate. It is wonderful. We need to, we need to pick better topics, I think, so we can get some more debates uh, going, so for sure. All right, cool. Uh, Jeremy Cravat says they showed Crowder respect by renegotiating. Instead of releasing him, um, it showed they wanted him. That's good. All right, let's scroll down here. We've, we... <laughs> We have had a lot of chat. We, I, I'm very behind. I apologize. It's hard to do this. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Mike's flexing. <laughs> I'm behind, obviously, but I'm just... <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, guys, if you have not liked the stream yet, we have a bunch of people watching right now, almost 40 people. Uh, do us a favor. Like the, like the stream. And again, if you're new and you're watching this right now and you're not subscribed, uh, we do hope that you will consider joining us. Check out the content on the channel. There's a lot on there. We're getting close to like 100 videos now, which is crazy to think about. Um, uh, Over almost 30 live streams. So lots of podcasts that you could turn on. You don't need to look at our ugly faces when we do this. You can just listen to us talk. Um, And we hope you enjoy and you consider subscribing. We are giving away. I said it earlier. We are going to give away this free Mini helmet that was signed by Wayne Corbett. So that is going to be the giveaway once we hit 1,000 subscribers. All right, let's keep it moving here. Going to move, move, move. It's all Crowder. Jets gang, what is up, dude? New face in the chat. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Uh, Let's see. Fant is easily cuttable after this year. Fant played some guard in Seattle. Moses sets the O-line in, in stone and it looks scary. That's how I see it. Moses will, he will get me excited. Excited. Tighten the pants. Tighten the pants for sure. And again, I, I do this pretty much every week. Uh, this weekend I'm making, there's going to be a video that comes out. Um, and it is regarding our running game. And I'm just going to throw it up there. Because this one also has me tight in the pants as well. Um, It's right here. It's the Keys to Success Volume 5. It is the rushing attack. Um, If we get Morgan Moses on our offensive line, we are going to be a really, really good running football team. We'll be able to run on people pretty consistently too, I think. Like, I would say well above... Uh, you know, the top 20. I think we're going to be, you know, in the upper half of the NFL and running if we get Morgan Moses in here. So that move cannot be underrated in my mind. I think it's a huge, huge thing. Oh, Jeremy, that's what we do, baby. 
we do an interaction thing. That is what we like. Uh, so thank you again. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, let's see. <laughs> thank you, Grant. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, everybody. We got we got some champions on this channel that have been here from the beginning. We really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I think Crowder's agent is on here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. All right, let's keep moving. Uh, wasn't Michael Carter running with the ones too at one point? Uh, excuse me, Michael Carter, the the cornerback, running with the ones at one point. I think he was, and we've got some yeah. people who are very high on him as well. There are a ton of young cornerbacks on this team. It's ridiculous. They're all under the age of 25 as far as I understand. There will be some people that get cut. And again, potentially, it could be some people that were drafted. I don't know for sure what will happen there, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, it's like, Mike, you got some feedback terrible from your headphones because you got one of them out. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it's like going into work and them telling you you performed above average, but we have to cut your pay in half because we want to hire a trainee. <laughs> Very true. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I think Bless is gone. There's a guy on Twitter that I, that I do follow and I interact with sometimes, and he's always chirping about you know the next big thing, and I'll get into that in the next segment. Um, but Bless Austin was one of the names that he mentioned. Bless Austin is a really good tackler. He's physical, uh, but he is not very good in coverage. He struggles, and he's going to need to uh, he's going to need to take a step up. If he's going to stick on this roster, he's going to need to do very very well this offseason, I think. <clears throat> Sir Mansier, appreciate that compliment, dude. It means a lot. Uh, we've only been doing this for six months, so we're hoping to continue to just get better and better. The feedback is appreciated. We're just hoping, you know, to continue to grow and to uh, make it a better experience for everybody. So, all right, man, I can't keep up with you guys. You literally, I, I've been scrolling as hard as I can down and you guys just keep on going. Uh, Chad's views are great, according to Sir Mansier. He really, it's always funny. I feel like Mike and I, it's, it's Chad. Chad is the man that gets the, the, the appreciation from the comments. Everybody likes them. So, well done, Chad. <sighs> Best dress. We are caught up. And so with that, we got to move on. Crowder, he has been one of the most talked about Jets this offseason, I feel like. On our channel, we've talked a lot about Crowder. Uh, so we will move on from Jamison Crowder. And look at this new scene. My goodness. We don't pull out. We, we pull out all the stops on this channel. <laughs> uh anyway what? we're gonna we're gonna briefly we don't, we don't pull what oh we don't pull out that's what you said i said we pull out all the stops yeah but you started with I, we don't pull out i was so i thought that was a tickle it's inappropriate but it's funny <laughs> <laughs> it's funny uh so we have on the screen right now we have some video of jamie and sherwood I did post this video uh, this past weekend, and uh, a lot of people really liked it. Um, it was a very popular video. Um, Jamie and Sherwood and Hamza Nazril Dean are going to be competing uh, not only for a role in special teams, but also on defense. You know, they're going to be competing for reps and, um, you know, downs played. What are your takeaways with Jamie and Sherwood? I am going to go to Chad first. What are some things that you see that you like? Some things maybe you don't like about Jamian. Uh, this clip is going to play over and over again. We do not need to talk forever on him. We can go pretty quickly here. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, it's just the raw athleticism, um, which is as best as you could hope for uh, this time of year. I think going into the season, and I know that these guys are, are converting from strong safety to a potential uh, outside linebacker situation. And, and honestly, that's our linebacking. And we've said this before, our linebacking and, and, and corners are the biggest question marks on this team right now. Um, I don't know what the future is for Gerard Davis. And I do like Blake Cashman, but I mean, nobody can call him proven right now. So they're going to get their opportunities. It's not out of the realm of possibilities that you could be looking at a starter within the first few weeks of the season. Yep. 
Cool. Yeah, and I think he will he will get some reps. Worst case scenario, and I said this in the video, both of these guys are going to probably play on special teams this season, even if they are you know, playing a good amount on defense. Mike, what are your thoughts on she- Jamie and Sherwood? Uh, just any takeaways that you have on them? <clears throat> I think Chad, Chad was right on point. I mean, the, the raw athleticism, um, I think he has an immense amount of awareness for such a, for such a, a young player. Um, how that translates to the field, obviously, will be something that we'll be keeping an eye on as we get into camp and then as we get into the season. I do agree with you, John, that he will have a presence on special teams. I think that, that the special teams will be all the better for it. Um, I actually think one of the most – I'll be the weirdo. I'm actually really looking forward to keeping an eye on the special teams this year. I think unlike previous – the last two or three years, I feel like our special teams actually has – a legitimate role to play in terms of whether our season is, you know, our winning percentage is sub average or sub. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what I'm talking about. Yep, yep. I can't, remember, I can't You're good. communicate. Right. But, <laughs> but I think that, I think that, I think the special team is a big part of that I, it just as, just as big as whether our linebacker crew is legit or whether it's say facade as, as, as I don't know. I've actually <laughs> feel that that risk that we've talked about, a month ago is less for me than what it was. That's a topic for another day. But I, I, back to my main point, I, I think that seeing some of these young players um, be on the special teams and see them develop and still contribute on special teams is a big part of that. But but yeah, I think I think Chad hit. I, I I would just add his awareness and his ability to hopefully hit the field running at the NFL professional level is probably what we're hoping to see. Yep, I'll just add that he hits like a truck. Um, he doesn't have quite as much athleticism as Hamza, in my opinion, or Hamza uh, Nazruddin. Um, but we need an enforcer on our defense. We need somebody to hit strong um, and to make plays, you know, by making big hits. We don't really have that uh, a whole lot of that on our defense. Um, you can say what you want about C.J. Mosley, even Jared Davis. I don't know of them as being, you know, strikers necessarily on defense. And we need that, I think, um, to intimidate offenses and he brings that. I mean, he's got he's got a very he's got a good boom. I'll say that. Uh, Stephen, what's up? Stephen Engel, good to see you. Happy you're here. And Jeremy says our special teams actually has depth to the point of heavy competition. JD is amazing. Yes. And Mike's favorite signing of the off season, Mr. Justin Hardy of the New Orleans Saints, uh, led the best coverage team in the NFL last year. Love that it's, man. It, listen, man, it's it's a it's a factor. Special teams win and lo- wins and loses games every week in the NFL. So we got more feedback from your Mike. Somebody, I think it was Mike this time. Um, I'm liking more drinking Mike from draft night. <laughs> He's thinking back to the draft night, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> we will we will have more drinks uh, this summer. I have a feeling that's going to be a thing we'll do. So if you enjoy seeing us getting drunk, that's definitely on the docket for sure. All right, we'll move on from Jamian. Um, I would say of the two, I'm more confident in Hamza. I think that he is the more likely one to win a starting role. Uh, Mike, you went uh, second, or sorry, you went first last time, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, Chad, your take, and I got to fix the camera here. Hold on one second. I apologize, guys. Oh, Chad, were you never even on the damn screen? Yeah, he was. He was in bottom left for a second. Did we drop him? Maybe he maybe he got dropped, and I don't even realize it. Oh, yep, Chad got dropped. Maybe that was why we had some static electricity in the. In the... <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I added him. Uh, Mike, you're first since he's not here. Uh, the early worm gets the apple. Uh, J- Hamza Nazruddin, what do you love about him? What are you What are you thinking? He's a beast. <laughs> I, don't... I love he's him. A beast. I love I... him. I mean, I think um, uh, defense wins championships. D- DWC hit the nail on the head. I mean, kind of gave the perfect icebreaker to to this point right here, which is, I do think one of the biggest steals of the draft. I think it was one of the highlights for me of of seeing the Jets make a pick like this after such horrible history of picking. Um, to me, really, <laughs> to me, Sorry. you already put him on a pedestal. Right. No, I'm good. There's just a funny comment in the in the chat. Uh, yeah. yeah no, I... just just 
Yeah, he's a beast. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, if you and me were collaborating and we were making a linebacker in Madden, this is the man we would create, I feel like. Oh, 100%. He's got these long... I'll be playing the last of Mohegan songs yeah. while I'm using them, while I'm using them <laughs> left and right. Yep. There he is. Hey, there he is. Chatty boy. Um, Chad, you got dropped like Crowder's contract. That was one of the comments that was read. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I real short and sweet here. Hamza Nazruddin, to me, and it was touched on earlier, I think he's got a much, much higher ceiling than Jamie and Sherwood, and that's not really a knock on Jamie. I do think there's things I like about him, um, which, again, I don't really understand why the Jets didn't take Hamza before Jamie and Sherwood. I can't really figure that part out. But there's really not a lot I don't like about uh, Jamie, or excuse me, Hamza. I think he's good against the run. He's a hell of a tackler. He led the team in tackles as a sophomore and as a junior. <laughs> so this is not like a an all coverage safety. This is not an only like a box safety kind of guy. He's all over the place. And he's now moving to linebacker. And I think he can be a Swiss army knife on defense and can make an impact on in coverage, can make an impact blitzing, tackling. Uh, Chad, what are your uh, thoughts of Hamza? It's still so early, but what are your thoughts on Hamza, uh, you know, versus Sherwood? Well, I mean, if you go back to our, uh, one of the really, really good topics we had last week, which was who would be your, your top 10 draft picks on the current roster if you had to pick them now, um, I snuck him in at number 10 because – I believe in his upside, um, and that's all it is. He's 22 years old. Yes, he has a significant knee injury, but if it wasn't for that, you, you could be talking about a first or second round talent. Um, so I've got I've got nothing but high hopes. Uh, I'm gonna start calling him Ham. I I, I, I like that. Um, so I've got nothing but high hopes for him. Um, if there's anywhere where he can stand out, I think he's gonna. I think it could be on this roster. Because you can make a significant argument that he could he could win a starting job sooner rather than later uh, on our team. Yep. And I think that J Man and Hamza could play, you know, even week one. They'll get some they'll get some downs on defense, I think. They're not gonna play a bunch of downs, I don't think. But they could get some work early in the season. I don't think there's any doubt about it. And definitely on special teams, Vern Vern points it out. The man can boom them. Will be nice to have some good gunners with speed on special teams. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's the thing, Kev. I think that, I think that was probably the quote of the show so far. You're competing for quote of the show. Uh, Chad got dropped like Crowder's contract. That was a good one. Um, he said just having some fun. Uh, if healthy, Ham is a great risk pick. Let's see what happens. I think both will play till one emerges. I agree as well. I think they're both going to play early in the season and then whoever makes more plays is just going to get more playing time and if it's jamie and sherwood i'm fine with being wrong i think everybody would be <clears throat> all right um we are going to move on to our second to last topic this one is in response to basically twitter uh there were some very interesting tweets sent out this past week and it was Speaking about Vincent Smith, wide receiver for the Jets, and wide receiver Braxton Berrios. And one tweet read basically, Braxton Berrios, should, he be, should we be looking at him as a potential starter? And that really is what the tweet said. It read as, should we be thinking about that as, an, as a possibility? And I think it's laughable. And it was laughable before we... You know, we even made the restructuring of Crowder, and it is even more laughable now. I think it's just insane to think that we would have ever had him in the lineup at all this season. Um, not only is he the sixth man on the team right now and wide receiver as the uh, as far as the depth chart goes, we had him in the starting lineup last year, and it didn't work out too good. Just a reminder, it fucking sucked. So, um... Anybody who says he should be a starter is clowning. That's a clown move. Wait, and I'm if, sorry. If, if, I'm going to let you talk. I'm going to let you talk. Hold on one second. There's okay, still more to this. Me, you gave me the hand. Okay. All right. No, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish it, and then I'll let you guys go at it. Um, and then the other tweet that I read was Vincent Smith. You know, people are sleeping on him, and he's going to have a big year this year. That's basically what the tweet said. He and sucks. Vincent Smith 
is a is essentially a um, you know he's a dime a dozen. You know he's a speed guy, kind of like a David right. Clowney. Um, I, I keep Braxton before I keep Vincent. I would as well. I would as well. And again, these are guys that are not going to be. Um, they're not. They may not even. My Vincent Smith's not going to be on the team unless there's a bunch of injuries. No. You you could make the argument that Braxton Berrios could make the team if there's one injury, because then he'd be the fifth guy. They might maybe keep six wide receivers, and that's his only shot. If everybody's healthy ahead of him, he's got. He's going to have to be kept as a sixth wide receiver. Um, so if you disagree with me, go for it. I'm not saying Braxton Berrios sucks. But what I am saying is, is Jesus, pump the brakes here just a little bit. We've had him on the team. We had him last year. He did okay in spots. I haven't, uh, I haven't, but I haven't. I'm, I'm giving it to Chad first because you went first last time. Sorry, buddy. I'm going to I'm gonna turn you down. Uh, Chad, you're up. Thoughts on Berrios? Thoughts on Vincent Smith? Yeah, so no. In, in an ideal scenario, neither one of them is going to be a starter. Uh, we don't think that's going to happen. But... Uh, a very unfortunate yet predictable part of the game is injuries. We have a 17 game season. We've got three preseason games this year. Every year it's bigger, stronger, faster, right? So unfortunately, one of our guys is going to go down with an injury. Hopefully it won't be anything too serious, but it's a, it's a part of the game. It's going to happen. So the point is you need quality backups like a Braxton Berrios who's, who could come in and fill in at a respectable level. So I think that's where that's where my hype is. I know he's catching a lot of balls right now, um, but I, he's catching those balls in seven on seven. You know Do we I mean? keep him as a six wide receiver though? Are we going to carry six wide receivers on the fifty three man roster? Potentially not, only because this is a going to be a run first offense. I think you're you're more likely to carry three or four uh, running backs. You might carry three tight ends and somebody may have to go. And that's my point. That's my point. Exactly. Unless somebody gets hurt, Barrios could be out. If mm-hmm. Mims, if Crowder, because Crowder's going to be here now and there's no way that Barrios makes the roster ahead of Crowder. If Mims, Crowder, Davis, Moore, and Cole are all healthy going into week one, how is Barrios yeah. on the 53? Unless you're keeping He's six. He's not. Except where my question comes in, which is, does Zach's, does Zach's word carry any protection for Barrios? If because the he's been connecting? Are, correct. If the reports, because then this goes back in with, this goes back into the same genre of, you know, do we, do we give, do we empower Zach? Do we make him feel like he is part of, will be part of the leadership group of the team? And if, Ch- if Zach comes in and says, hey, Robert, Mike, I really feel something with Braxton. Is there any way we can adjust our game plan to make him part of the squad and just see what happens? We gonna tell him, Zach, go kick rocks. Right. I, I, I don't. I don't have a. I don't have a preference on either one of those answers. I'm just throwing that out there. No, I like this it. This goes back in the same thing. I like it. It's a good point because if because it is indicating right, or the indications right now are that they do seem to have some good. You know, they have a good connection going. <clears throat> and you don't want to just, you know, dismiss that. You don't want to just, you know, kick that to the curb. Uh, Chad, th- thoughts on them? Or you already did talk. Sorry. You talked, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Okay. Well, I just, just both of your thoughts on does Zach's voice carry any weight his first year? And and it, his protection, protection for Braxton. I think that if, if he is clearly demonstrating, a, like if he's favoring Berrios, I think that does, you know, I think the Jets will consider that. I don't think that it's going to be a situation where he's going to go to Joe Douglas and be like, yo, Joe, I love Braxton, dog. Let's keep him on the squad. I don't think that's happening. But you're right, though. If, like, if he's clearly connecting with him in practices, I think that will speak volumes. Um, again, I'm just wondering, again, if everybody's healthy, if the five stay healthy through camp, which could not happen. It may, it may not happen. I think they should cut him. I really do. Because why – why give Zach? Why is it, why give Zach a target that's not going anywhere? To me, to me, it would be like it'd be like giving a kid a calculator before they have, they even had pre-algebra. <laughs> I mean, what? It would be like giving him a TI eighty three that could do the formula, 
before before you make him use the rest of the tool set, which has an amazingly higher glass ceiling of capabilities and talent. If they, I, mean, just... I, I don't know. I, to me, I, no offense, Zach. We're glad that you you feel connection with Braxton, but the team's already deep right. on that spot. We think they over time you'll you'll establish the same or better connection with these other receivers, mm-hmm. and. Yeah. You know, the team has to move in a direction for the greater of the whole team, not just how you're feeling in the moment. Well, we're going to go with the check because right now we are getting our, you know, we're getting our butts handed to us a little bit because they like Braxton Berrios. But the good thing is, is we all agree here, he is the sixth wide receiver. There's nobody saying, you know, he should be ahead of Keelan Cole, that he should be ahead of Crowder. Uh, Jeremy Cravat says that Berrios is awesome as a sixth man. I agree. He's great in that sixth spot. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Sir Mansier, he says, I think that Herndon may be the odd man out. So he said, someone had said earlier that they would rather cut Herndon than Berrios, which I guess could make it or could happen. Thomas says that he's not getting cut. So he just flat out says he's not going anywhere. Um, no disrespect to Berrios. Happy to have him as a sixth man if Wilson has a connection with him. And that's kind of how I feel. Again, I just wonder, are we going to carry six wide receivers? It's pretty rare. It's not impossible. Teams do it. But Chad did mention it earlier. If we are going to run the ball like uh, James Wighouse talked about, we're going to be a heavy run football team. Can we really afford to carry a six wide receiver every week? I don't think it's, it's likely. Spot. So again, if one receiver gets hurt, I think Barrows is easily on the team early in the season. I think he's definitely there. Uh, let's see. Gitmo says it's laughable, but if he's starting, then something went terribly wrong. Yeah, exactly. exactly. All all I hear about Smith is he drops the ball. Oops, did I say that? Yeah, you did. And that's okay because, again, what has Vincent Smith done in the two years that he's been here? And it's been nothing. We could put him on the practice squad. They could put Berrios on the practice squad. I don't know if he'd be picked up. <clears throat> I don't know if he's practice squad eligible. I don't know if he could still technically go to the practice squad, but if he could, absolutely. Uh, Jeremy agrees with you, Chad, that injuries do happen, and that's kind of why I think in the end I think that Berrios will be on the team because I think one of these five wide receivers will get dinged up at some point this preseason. Obviously, you don't hope for that, but the expectation is that somebody will probably get hurt. So, Sean Bennett says Berrios is a poor man's crebet. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Berrios has special team skills, and he will make it. He does have some good returnability, uh, you know, skills. I don't know if he excels at it, though, necessarily, so I don't know. Dude, I would love this. This is We talked about this in one of our podcasts, Thomas. Hayden Hurst would be a great, great fit for this scheme at tight end. I would love Hayden Hurst, and he's still pretty young. Uh, I don't think it would take a ton of draft, cap- draft capital to get this trade to go. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't know. I think that would be great. Uh, Vern Vern, I don't want you to take it wrong. I'm not being hard on him. I do I do believe that some fans are overhyping him, though. That is the take here. It's not that I don't like him. I do like him. I think he'd be a really fine five, wide receiver five on a lot of teams, and I think he's a really good sixth wide receiver. My only thing is, is are we going to keep six? That's kind of why this this discussion topic is here. Do we end up keeping six? And that's that's kind of why we're discussing this. So don't take it the wrong way. I do like Barrios. He's he's shown that he's a decent, you know, slot guy. Um, Sean Bennett says, Mike Dog. LOL. I don't know what he's referring to, <laughs> but he's not happy with you some way or another. Uh, let's see. Sir Mansier says that Crowder will push Barrios out because they kept him. That's possible. Uh, let's see. Zach can't have any friends or mentors. Poor kid. Keep Brax. <laughs> uh, let's see. Our number one wide receiver at the start of last year is now playing professional lacrosse. This is a great problem to have. One we never have. Very true. Uh, let's see. John Hybendall. That is a new name. John Hybendall. Welcome, sir. He says, last year, five of our wide receivers were hurt. 
yeah, we had terrible injuries at the wide receiver spots. Hopefully that does not happen. But if we start to get banged up, Barrios would be great to have on the roster, no doubt. So Thomas is disagreeing with me. He's saying if we do cut him that some team will pick him up. It's very possible. Did I say he sucks? Did I say Braxton Barrios sucks? No, I think what I said was is as a starter, that's a bad spot. I don't know if I said he sucks. I think that if he is our starter, which he was at one point last year, that ain't a good spot. That that situation sucks. Um, so anyway, I don't. I did not say he fucking sucked. I think you guys are misunderstanding me. It's all good. It's all good. If I said he sucked, if I said he sucked, then maybe I need to retract Come that. Me, I'm Come saying, as a starter. That's a very sucky situation. So if I screwed that up I, and I said Braxton sucked, my apologies. I'm I retracting that statement. Kidmo had it best. If he's in at any time of the season, we are in. Something went horribly wrong. Right. I don't think you can, anyone can disagree with that. Because if he is in your top four as part of this offense, someone needs to someone needs to actually call in next week and explain that point. So if he's in. <laughs> then we're already looking to 22. Yep. Yep. And I think that's what the point I was trying to make. Maybe when I said that it fucking sucked, I meant that just that situation would suck. All right. No worries. No big deal. I'm good with you guys going after me a little bit. We will go to our... getting it. It's all good. I'm good with it. Um, that's a great question. He says, what if Mims goes deep in the doghouse? Boy, oh boy. I hope that doesn't happen. But I don't think it will. So I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> Kev, who has the best ten o'clock shadow? <laughs> this is a ten o'clock. This, this, sure. this is a ten o'clock shadow kind of channel for sure. We all we all carry a shadow. All right, last topic of the night, guys. Thanks for everything, guys. You've been very very busy in the chat. It's a lot of fun doing this every single week. I actually I know we're not there yet, but I cannot wait to do our Sunday recap stream it's going to be shorter than these streams but i just can't wait to actually start talking about the games that have happened it's going to be so much fun to recap what's going on on sundays so <clears throat> anyway before we go we will discuss this last topic again guys before you go we got about 37 people in here right now go ahead and hit the like button uh before you go thanks again for tuning in and again, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, but you've been lurking and you've been watching, we would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. We're doing that giveaway on September 1st. Give yourself a shot at the prize. Um, okay, last topic of the night. We talked a little bit about it actually at Chad's Cookout. We did hang out this past weekend. Um, DIY tailgate versus a paid tailgate. So DIY would mean you bring your grill in your, you know, your car, you go to the stadium, you grill, you got your coolers, you do everything yourself versus going to a catered slash, you know, all set up, all inclusive type of paid tailgate. Which one do you guys prefer? Um, I'm, I cannot really speak on it too much because I've never gone to a paid tailgate, but I am interested to hear what other people think. Mike, what do you say? What do you prefer? What which one would you I've prefer? Never been to a, I've never been to a paid tailgate. I mean, it's intriguing. Um, just, I guess. Uh, oh, I, I just missed a I phone almost, call. I, I put that in the same the same boat as Jacksonville's uh, uh, stadium club. That's that's like got a pool and it's like it's field field side. Uh, it's like people argue of like, is that is that appealing to you to to go to a club? and be in a pool while you're at an NFL game. I, I don't know. Now, maybe that's a that's a topic for another day. But I guess I kind of put that pay tailgating in there where you're kind of, you know, is, does that detract from, I don't know, the, the experience of what the game is supposed to be? I, I could go either way. I, I love I love a good event. So I'm not going to I'm not going to kick that down the road. If, if anyone wants to recommend a pay tailgate, I'm all ears. Let me know. We you know gotta... if it's all you can drink. I hate to I'm interrupt you, but that. we do have a phone call. All right, let's do it. Hello, NYJ Today. Who's this? Yo, yo, yo. Who is this? <laughs> Are you there? Hang up. 
Uh, if you're there, one last chance. Uh, yeah, sorry. My bad. We got a call, but there was no answer on the other end, even though I didn't hang up, on, up them. on them. Yeah, I didn't hang up on them this time, so no excuse. That one was not a John fail. Uh, anyway, Mike, you were talking. Continue. Uh, no, I'm open. I'm all ears. I want to learn more about these paid tailgates. I would love to know more. I'm not opposed to them. I do think that you get, if you were tailgating with friends, family, um, and you're doing your own setup, I do think there's there's something, I don't know, intangible about that. Something 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 you get out of that you probably don't get out of a paid tailgate. I could be wrong about that. So only for the fact that I haven't been to a paid tailgate, I lean traditional. Um, but if, there's are, if there are people out there who've done it and recommend it, Please put it in the chat. Perfect. Chad, why don't you go? Because you've done both, actually. Yeah. Uh, most regularly, we do our own tailgate. But um, one year, a couple years ago, I tailgated with the uh, Gotham City crew uh, party that they do. And and I'll give them all the credit. They they do a great job. They had, they had a ton of food. They had a bunch of different beers. I, I don't remember the exact price. It was like $34 or something like that um all you but could it was drink like, right yeah it was all you could drink um at at that particular game i'm trying to remember that was the sunday night i'm sorry that was the thursday night game against the bills where the dancing jets uh meme came out mm-hmm. um thank god we won that game um but it was just me and my brother that game and we i don't remember what the circumstance was but like we didn't feel like doing the whole cleanup and stuff um now i will tell you more often than not, I, I, I do I would rather do the tailgate myself. Um, if anybody's familiar with Met like MetLife Stadium, one of the worst things is uh, getting the the traffic, hitting the traffic out there. So in the past couple of years, what we'll do is we'll obviously get there early, tailgate and start drinking and everything. But after the game ends, we'll set up the tailgate again and then just kind of chill until traffic leaves and then just kind of you know crack a couple of beers fire up the grill again and then that way you know traffic's empty you see like you know people buzzing around the stadium or whatever Mm -hmm. that i think is is the better way to go absolutely cool uh so there's a bunch of comments on this actually and i'm kind of glad i'm glad i made this comment or this topic i should say because it seems pretty popular so gitmo says paying for a tailgate is lame and i would never do it uh defeats the purpose of getting psyched with your buds and again, Gitmo, this is kind of the way I lean as well. Um, I was looking into Gotham City crew, like Chad talked about, um, just because I'm going with my wife. She wants to tailgate. She wants to do the DIY tailgate. So I think that's what we'll end up doing. Uh, but I was going to try to pamper her a little bit. What are you doing with that beer can, bro? Hmm? What are you I doing? I don't want a can. I don't want a can. You're so full of shit. You're so full of shit. Um, you're still cracking it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so I was looking to kind of spoil her a little bit and make it a really special thing. Um, but I think but I think the but the thing to do really is just to have a kick ass, you know, do it yourself kind of event here. Uh, Grant Root says DIY tailgate as long as I'm not manning the grill. I actually like to grill at the when I'm tailgating. It's something you know special about that. You know, man in the grill, uh, serving people food, seeing them smile. We got to see Chad doing that this past weekend. He was <laughs> he was essentially dancing while he cooked. Um, it was quite the show. Uh, Vinny, uh, by the way, not recognize you in the chat. Oh, we got our caller again, thrice times. Here we go. Let's try it again. one to send a voicemail press goodbye for god's sake <laughs> well that failed again don't know why but anyway uh vinnie b bad vinnie bad excuse me we do not recognize you welcome to the show dude he says it's a stupid ass question about the vaccine let's stick to football here and vinnie we agree with you we talked about it earlier on the show it's a crazy question and it's just not appropriate it is his own personal information so all right, let's see here. Uh, caller was Barrios prank calling you. This is now the fourth time he's calling, so let's try this one more time. Press 
send a voicemail. Hello, this is NYJ Today. Hello? Yeah, I'm going to have to block this dude because he just keeps calling and not saying anything. This is the first time. I I have to block you, dude. Sorry. My bad. Uh, anyways, uh, Burio's prank calling me. Yeah, he must have seen my, you know, that he sucks comment earlier. Uh, let's see. Oh, my God. Sean Bennett says I got pulled over and hammered and naked two months ago. That's why he can't. He needs us to pick him up to go to the games. He said he lost his license. <laughs> Sean Bennett, <clears throat> that's that's unfortunate, but having read your comments for now over six months, I'm not surprised, sir. But you sound like a damn good time, bro. I want you to come with us to our to our tailgate, and if necessary, I will pick your ass up. Um, if you're going to the Pats game, I'm all in. Uh, let's see. Sir Mansier says I go with tailgaters. The food, music, and unlimited alcohol is great. I will have to look into that. I have never heard of them. <laughs> Um, but I am still kind of shopping, trying to make my mind up. I think I'm leaning towards the DIY tailgate. Um, I can spoil my wife doing it like that, too. John, the, the answer here is is it's blatantly simple. We're both going to the same game. We do our DIY Ooh. tailgate. I, I'll bring the stuff. Oh, it's, it, it's, already, it's, it's, it's already right there. There's, there's no argument. In like fact... It. Make it an NYJ Today meetup, the first the first of its kind. I like it. You're going, I'm going, and uh, I'm going to have tables set up. We'll get a grill, and we'll, we, will, we will work that out. And and by, that's the whole thing is that's the reason why I want to get to 1,000 by September 1st because then we can live stream from my phone, from a laptop. I can't technically do that right now uh, from a cell phone specifically. Um, I can't do that unless I get to 1,000 subscribers. That's one of the um, one of the things that you have to have in order to do that. So that was the that was the idea was that we could live stream at the game if we hit a thousand before uh, September. So we have to we have to be able to park next to each other so we can have the space to set up all this stuff. We will do that. Don't worry. Because that's will... that is the problem at the stadium is that they relegate you to that only that one parking spot. So what you do is you park and then you set up, you know, right behind your car, your truck. Or exactly. Whatever. Yes. So if we can get two spots next to each other, um, that'll work out perfectly. We're going to work it out. Don't you worry. Uh, we will set that up. I'm uh, leaving tonight. I'll be there. I'm, I'm... <laughs> oh, okay. You're going, you're going a little early. I like it. Uh, let's see. Uh, cheers to you, Vinny again. Thanks again for tuning in. Hope you subscribe. Um, it says, if you can drink the cost of the tailgate price, why not? That's a good way to look at it. If you can drink enough beer and eat enough food to hit that price, then it's probably worth it. If you don't exceed the price, then it's probably not worth it. Even though you, the one thing you have to keep in mind, though, is it does make it a little easy. You just kind of show up. Yeah, Vervain, I don't know what the hell was going on there with that caller. Uh, they were struggling. They were ghosting. Um, so again, if you were the one calling, I can unblock you. If you just, you know, tell me in the chat that you were calling. Uh, let's see. John is other teams when Crowder's agent called <laughs> that I blocked. <laughs> uh, which game are you going to? I have tickets to game one, but that's it so far. Sir Mancier, are you referring to game one in Charlotte or are you referring to game one in uh, the Met, uh, excuse me, at MetLife versus the Pats, because that's the game we are talking about. Chad and I will be at the week two game versus the Patriots. Our ladies, Michelle and Michelle will be there. And then Mike and I are hitting the road week three and we're going to Denver, Colorado, which is crazy. We've never done a road game quite like that. <clears throat> So Grant Rude's saying you could live stream from your phone on Twitch and bounce it to YouTube. Dude, I don't know how to do all that shit. <laughs> You're probably right, though. I probably could. But I don't know how to work that wizardry. I'm not that savvy. I know it looks like it, but... Oh, you're going to the Charlotte game. That's awesome. I think we're going to beat the Panthers in week one. I, I really do feel confident in that. I think we're going to be able to... I think we're going to be able to pass rush in that game. I think they're not going to be able to protect Sam enough. And I think Sam's going to make some bad decisions as he has done in the past. So, 
Ooh, are you there for real? Are you actually going to Denver? Because if you are, I am fired up. All right. So we are. That's dangerous. We do lean toward. Oh my God, it would be so dangerous. It's already dangerous enough that you and me are going together. Um, yeah. We have to be very careful. We have to be very careful. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be so careful. Anyway, um, DIY sounds like that's the popular one amongst us and the people. Uh, Kev, I think that he will. I think that I think Becton. Ha- I, I'm, I'm almost wondering if the Jets faked it. Maybe he doesn't even have plantar fasciitis. Maybe the Jets are just limiting his reps. They're just saying, you know what, big fella, you are a big fella. Just take it easy. We don't need you in mini camp right now. We need you in training camp. Um, right. So it's. I don't think that it's likely that they're literally faking his injury, but maybe it's not as big a deal. Uh, as we, um, as we think it may have been. Um, so I'm thinking he will start week one, unless he gets injured in the preseason. Becton, I agree. I agree. He's fine. Um, we get nervous though, because we love him so much and we think so much of him. It's just something that makes you nervous when you see that he might be injured. Uh, yeah, the legal pot thing, uh, no comment, no comment, get Mo Bob. That's not why we went at all. And that's not why you go to Colorado. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, Beckton looks like it's a bluff situation. That's kind of how I read it as well. Not necessarily that he's super injured, that plantar fasciitis. Again, maybe they just want him to sit on his bat and his ass and say, we want you to work your butt off leading up to training camp, stay healthy, and then be ready to, to go. Uh, we're sitting at 29 likes. Can we get one more like before we leave this stream? Chad, any message before we wrap this show up that you want to leave the Jets fans with? No, very good show tonight. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Appreciate the activity in the chat. Yes, it's been busy for sure. You guys make it fun every single week. And again, I, I know I've said this before. I always have anxiety, not of actually being on the you know YouTube live and my face being there. I always get anxiety wondering if people will show up. And I don't know why I do anymore because that's been you know months ago that we had that you know. Uh, but anyway. It's much appreciated. We really do take it seriously that you take time out of your Wednesday nights to join us to talk about this damn team. Uh, Mike, any thoughts you want to leave us with here um, as we wrap it up? Much love and thanks. Appreciate it. I hope everyone has a good rest of your week. Yep. Uh, So, yeah, that'll be it, guys. Uh, Look out for Keys to Success Volume 5. It's going to be coming out on Saturday morning. I'm very, very excited about this video. Hope you guys will check it out. Thanks again for everything. If you're watching this afterwards, like, subscribe. Hope to see you guys for our next Wednesday uh, stream. We will have Mike. It'll be myself and it will be James. Chad's going to take a week off. Um, Look forward to seeing you guys in the show. Go Jets. See you guys next time. And a word from my girl.